Hey, Action Shelf listeners, before we jump into the show itself, we want to tell you about how you can get even more action in your life. Mm. <laughs> that appeals to more you. Action, more action, you more say, More action, John. you say, yes. If you go over to our Podbean patron page, that's patron.podbean.com slash punchup, you can listen to Lisman and I watch, what's this? Good action movies. Good action movies, you say? That's right, a change of pace. We thought behind the paywall, let's give people something of quality. So And give us something of quality. I know, it's such know? a pleasure to do that. So twice a month, you and I will be doing commentary tracks that you can download for uh, yes. good action movies, all kinds of awesome mm. stuff from a lot of our heroes like John Woo. And uh, we've done stuff from the John Wick franchise and Sylvester Stallone, mm-hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger, all the guys we never get to talk about on here. Yeah, so you, stuff we legitimately love and uh, love to share with with you you all. Um, yeah, yeah. So you can listen to that uh, as as well as other cool exclusive content from the Punch Up Entertainment Network shows. Uh, once again, the address for that is patron.podbean.com/slash/punchup. And now into the action. The action show. Welcome to the Action Shelf, the podcast celebrates the glory of B action movies. I'm John Campbell. I'm Michael Lisman. Oh, uh, Lisman, as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end, and so too mm-hmm. must video game Valentine's Month here on the Action Shelf. Yes, video game movies, a good thing is some is a sentence a lot of people have said. Before. Well, as as we've said many times this month. There's not a single bad one. I mean, this was a real gift this month. I was it? really trying to find one, and it was my quest to, to find a, one bad video game movie. Hit and I after just... hit after hit with these video game adaptations. Yeah, so we need to take a break, and maybe we'll come back later and see if we can find yeah, you know, we're still in that the mythical bad movie. People are but, writing uh, in going, these movies are just too good, guys. You, you shouldn't yeah. be talking about these. Yeah. you got nothing to talk yeah, we about. Need to, we need to bring down our standards. And I think uh, a real fine entry in this genre is the extremely not confusingly titled doa colon dead or alive yes that's right (laughs) and if you guys are wondering this is based off of the dead or alive fighting game slash volleyball simulator franchise and thank god Uh, this is a movie that does capture both but being this theme month we are sharing this wonderful section Mm. of film with uh, a host of guests and joining us again on the show is maggie torres it is me i watched the movie i did that <laughs> you watched all the movies i did technically watch all of the movies here's, here's the thing that's interesting is maggie's on the show sporadically but maggie mm-hmm. is kind of the like ghost third host of the show right yes, uh, yes. because i give michael so many jokes you give him that's so many not jokes. even that's not a bit no you give i so give many... him jokes i i know this to be true and the other thing we've started to figure out is you seem to understand the movies better than him too because yes. there's so many times on this show that Lisman goes you know it was maggie who noticed that this <laughs> So I, I think we're going to not re- just bad movies too. Um, it's everything. It's everything. We watch. We've uh, <laughs> we've been watching Severance as well, and Maggie will be like, "Did you hear the name of that town that's in the next county? That's the name of this person who does this." And it's like, "What the fuck?" I'm I'm just like huh? enjoying the cinematography, and Maggie's like, "No, it all makes sense." Well, and then cinematography. <sighs> totally lost on me there you go i don't i don't pay attention to any cinematography i'm only cluing in on words yeah and what's what's in the background what i love is between the two of you is an ideal audience member i think so i think so um and (laughs) this ideal audience member watched doa colon dead or alive uh, truly or as you like to call it what do i call it Dead on Arrival. Dead on Arrival. That's well, right. I will yeah. say... You wouldn't stop saying that last night. I don't night. know. There, <laughs> there is a movie called DOA that's one of the all-time great film noirs, which still to this day I think has 
one of the all-time great cinema opening scenes where a guy goes into a police station and says, I'd like to report a murder. And the guy says, who's the victim? And he says, I am. And the whole movie is the guy's been poisoned and he's trying to figure out who killed him before he dies. Great, mm. great old that film noir. That sounds dope. That's you, a good idea for a movie. It's yeah. a great classic film noir. Highly recommend people check that movie out and not this. Watch the other better DOA. Wonderful, I mean, this is great noir. similar tonally, I think. I think thematically, <laughs> very, it has some, yeah, it definitely very bar- similar some tone. inspiration. Oh, yeah. man. Uh, so this is based on the, uh, yes, the fighting game slash volleyball uh, experience. Get- Experience is the right word, John. Um, do you, which I only know as basically a kind of a joke of a video game franchise in some ways, especially yes. as it's uh, evolved. Yeah, I haven't heard anyone mention uh, "Dead or Alive" like with earnest appreciation since I was twelve years old. Yeah, I think that's the last time somebody said I'm a big fan of "Dead or Alive." And then they said, there's a cheat where you can make all the women naked. And then I'm like, this conversation's over. Goodbye. I remember uh, that was that was the case in a lot of games. I feel yeah. like there was that. Because I remember that was also a Tomb Raider thing, too. Oh, well, there you go. Um, Gotta yeah. love 12-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was looking. I'm like, when did the last Dead or Alive game come out? 2019 is the answer. So they're... Still making them. Great. Yeah, at awesome. least a spinoff. The last official Dead or Alive entry, Dead or Alive 5, came out in 2015. Okay. So, but they've been making the volleyball They've games. been doing Correct. the extreme sports spinoff yes. thing. Uh, Dead or Alive Extreme, no E, just the X, Extreme 3 came out in 2019. Oh, wow, that's the most this, 90s. the early 2000s? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and it's it's just sexy Japanese girls in bikinis is the cover. Yep. Okay. Well, you know. I mean, is this movie? Is it the perfect encapsulation of the I video mean, game I, franchise? I think, in some ways, as terrible as this movie is, yes, it might be one of the most faithful adaptations we've seen of a game. It feels like it. <laughs> it definitely felt like if I didn't know that this was a fighting game that turned movie, mm-hmm. I would guess that it was yeah. a video game movie. It, yeah, and I yes. don't know if I could say that for. Any of the any other, of the other I, movies. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, n- yeah. No, other I think than, that, double, that dragon, double Dragon. Maybe. Yeah, Double Dragon. That one was a weird. Although Double reading. Dragon is more like, is this a comic book, a cartoon? You know, it's not a movie originally because it's just so yeah. weird. But this yes. is the most video game movie in its structure too. Like yes. the movie is yes. built like a video game, and not in a, as much of a fan as we are of video games. I mean that as an insult. It's this yes. is this is a bad use of a video game uh, yes. structure because it's 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 so nothing. It's so empty. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The characters are so ill defined. Um, there's too many characters. There's so, honestly. I we'll get into the plot of the movie itself. What is there? But I mm-hmm. love that the entire first round of fighting has to be like a five minute montage because there's too many characters. And they're like, yep. we got to get rid of like 20 of these people in a montage. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> just, there's just they, too much. It's 86 they, minutes, this movie. <laughs> they didn't want to save some of the characters for the sequel. You know, no. it's it's that old adage. You got to get everything on the page in the first draft. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, so. yeah. Was there ever talk about a sequel to this thing? I don't um, think so. so you guys I watched? Think when, I think when they originally pitched it, they were like, and then we could do sequels. Oh, I'm and sure. Then it just I think did so bad that they were like, we're not doing any. I sequels. guess not. Well, speaking Oops. of how bad it did, I do want to ask you guys how much do you think this movie cost? <laughs> Two questions, actually, on this one. Yeah, yeah. How much did it how cost? Much... How much did it make? Okay, so this is 2005, 2006. 2006. There. Yep. Okay. Do I have to account for like inflation and stuff? Because I'm not good at that. No, we also, am I. We all know that I'm not good I've at knowing never... how much money's how much money's how much money it costs to make movies. Mm-hmm. Sure. I'm notoriously bad at this. So is so is Michael. And we do this. Every so week. am I. Yeah. I, I fail every week. So yeah. let's fail together. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so just based I'm gonna on guess what you saw. that it's the. The cost to make it is going to be in the millions, right? Yes, it will that's, definitely that's be normal. in the millions. Yes, yes. yeah. Uh, one million dollars is almost no movie, almost no money for a movie. Okay, it's like the CG. I was really bad, but it was, it was also two thousand five, two thousand six. So yeah. I mean, the CG 
wasn't good at that time anyway. For the most part, yeah. Let, let, this is something we've been doing. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to go with 10 million. 10 million? Maggie says 10 million. Lisbon? I'm going to go with 20. Ooh, Lisbon, damn close. 21. 21? Okay. And 20. then it made 300,000. <laughs> it made less than a million dollars. I will say, Maggie, you're pretty close to what it made opening weekend. $260,000 opening weekend. Oof. Oof. Total brutal. brutal. And to actually, you're close to the total U.S. <laughs> gross. Total U.S. gross. 480,000. That's total Yeesh. U.S. Now, worldwide. Right. What did now, it make worldwide? worldwide? Cost oh, 21. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. It made two million dollars. Okay, seven point five, which is more okay. than it should, but still considerably less. About I mean, a it's third. Based... It made about yeah. a third of what it cost to make. Yes, it, it is based on a pre-existing franchise, so you know there's going to be some buy-in, but clearly not enough to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now here's an interesting <laughs> thing: as cost. you bring this up, and this is something we've been doing on the show more and more, is. Mm -hmm keep this in mind maggie you were saying like a lot of there was a lot of and there is there's a lot of bad cgi at this time but let's just give a context for what the big movies out at this time were all right mm. uh we've got uh pirates of the caribbean 2 okay uh yeah. we've got 300 okay. uh That's mission impossible good. 3 casino okay. royale these were all yeah. sort of the big 2006 movies so what i'm saying is there was better stuff that was doing special effects at this time. Smoking. CG was better CG, yeah. at that time. Yeah, there well, were things that had C Is there CG in Casino Royale? Sure. Probably, probably. some. Yeah, I was some. thinking more of like Pirates of the Caribbean. All I think about in that movie is that terrible dress that the Bond girl had to wear, and that makes me angry. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, Mag Maggie's got some hot takes about Casino Royale. I hated the, that movie. <laughs> the, wow, wow. One of, probably one of the most <laughs> beloved Bond movies. And... I would say m most people would put number one Bond girl probably too. I think Vesper Lynn comes up a lot. Um, but uh, all right. she's all right. Yeah, uh, yeah. But um, uh, yeah, as as I bring all that. Oh, also in two thousand six, Lisbon, one of our favorites, Smoke and Aces. Oh yeah, which yeah, is a pretty awesome a kind of battle yeah. royale sort of mm -hmm. you know lots of people yeah. movie. That's a sick movie, yeah. man. That's an awesome movie. Uh, is that the one that has Alicia Keys in it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it does. Okay. I yeah. do remember when that came out because I was like, Leisha Keys, what are you doing? Yeah, she's awesome yeah. in that movie. She's Being playing a, a badass man. assassin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah, it's a cool movie. Uh, yeah. But, you know, that's 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 closer to this budget, too, where that's a more mm -hmm. low budget genre movie. And it's it's just way better. Um, it's le it's both less ambitious and more ambitious. Yeah. At the same time. yeah. And I will say the acting's a lot better because I will say. This is a movie where the acting is all over the place. All the characters are written terribly. But in yes. terms of actual acting ability, all over mm -hmm. the place. Because there are yes. some people who should never be on screen again. Uh, yeah, that is, um, that is definitely I got to say, uh, actually, a lot of the cast. <laughs> I would say 50% probably yeah. should not be in movies. And some anymore. of these people didn't act again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is about the end for Devin Aoki, yeah, uh, she was pretty weak. She, she was, was pretty uh, weak. Who in plays this film. Kasumi? Uh, yeah. I don't think there was much more for Holly Valance, who played Christy. Um, Christy, oh, I loved Christy. Christy was my favorite. We character. we do we do stand, we stand Christy, Christy in this, in this house. household. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think. But once again, more those are those women are both models, uh, and Holly mm. Valance is also a pop singer. I think, according to this, I will okay. say. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know about in terms of this person, uh, in general, but she married a guy named Nick Candy, uh, and so unfortunately her name has been changed to Holly Candy now. That's bad. That that's is, bad uh, name. that's unfortunate for her. Now, is Nick Candy related to John Candy? Do Ooh, we know this? Ooh. I, I, I don't see anything that says that, but that would be okay. cool. Okay, okay. British uh, entrepreneur husband Nick Candy. He so invented no, candy. He did. Yeah, the inventor of candy. And can I say that, Lisman? We just continue to see poor Brian White embarrassed on film. Because we he, saw him yeah. previously playing John Cena's partner in 12 rounds. And if you thought that was bad, holy crap, is he really embarrassing in this. Was he he was the uh Was he the green goatee guy? He sure was. God, he's like I feel so bad for him. What a shitty role. Yeah, and it, he's a he's, guy. He's literally we, just a punch, like a like a comic relief. Black, we talked about like punching bag. He's a guy who's been good in a bunch of stuff. 
He's a yeah. he's a good legitimate like working actor. There's a moment at the very like after somebody oh Jamie Presley beats the shit out of him after their fight. He honestly and earnestly says, "I'm sorry about all that stuff. You have my <laughs> respect." In like the most earnest way possible. I'm like Jesus Christ, this man has been a good actor this whole time, and they've just been doing him dirty. I mean, I just um, was watching, uh, we were talking about uh, Ryan Johnson before this, and I was just wa- re-watching Ryan Johnson's first movie, Brick, and that mm-hmm. this guy is in that. And he's, he's in Brick? He's in Brick. He's great. What? He, yeah, he Whoa. plays the, I like, Brick. Brick is a great movie, and he's great. In, he's like the star quarterback character in that at the high school, mm. and he's really good in it. And I was watching that going, oh, this poor guy. And we've talked about he's on The Shield. He was on Ray Donovan. He was on Burn Notice. I mean, he's yeah. he's a working actor who's very good in stuff. Uh, and But it's just twice now in two weeks we've seen this guy in embarrassing and, yes, like also stereotypical black guy roles too, which are yes. really yes. – I- Man, and he goes with gusto. He's in. He's doing I mean, what they're asking him to do. But he's good doing the Lord. work. Yeah, good he's putting in the work. Lord. That's for sure. Um, but we got to talk about who made this movie, Listman, because yes. I was absolutely shocked when I saw that Corey Yoon directed this film. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, uh, Corey Yoon, uh, you know, we're we're both huge martial arts movie fans, mm-hmm. uh, and we certainly know Corey Yoon. I mean, this guy comes from. China going all the way back into the 70s. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, he, he, this is a guy who I think worked in, in some capacity with uh, Bruce Lee, right? Uh, yes. He, I'm just looking at his, uh, his list here. Well, he definitely uh, was a, a, a contemporary of Samo Hung and Jackie Chan. Yes. yes. Uh, What's and, that? <laughs> Uh, and oh, he, he's in Yes, Madam. Yeah, he's, he's a martial yes, arts performer Madam. and a filmmaker. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Okay, uh, yes. And has worked extensively with Jet Li, he directed a number mm-hmm. of Jet Li's films. And yeah. uh, his first American film is The Transporter, which is great. Yeah. The Transporter is so much fun. Um, this was it for the directing on him. You don't get to direct after you make this. This sends you to director jail. Is it? Is it his, yeah. like... It's such a strange thing, this, like, you make a movie bad enough that you don't get to make films anymore. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's sort of a strange thing. The, as they call uh, it, director jail. A lot of people have jail. ended up in director jail. Some people have broken out. I'm looking at you, M. Night Shyamalan. Some um, people have, yeah. I'm still waiting for Frakes to break out of director jail. Jonathan Frakes, who played Riker on Next Generation, what? has been in director jail the since The man he... who asks me all the questions. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Jonathan Frakes has been, has been in director jail since he made Thunderbirds for Disney, um, which was a, a huge disaster of a space movie. And people are going like, but he's been crushing it on TV, he directs a lot of the Star Trek TV shows. And people yeah. are like, let him direct a fucking movie again, man. Let Frakes mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Um, but I-, I will say he's continued to work extensively as a choreographer uh, for both Jet Li and Jason Statham. He has extensive cool. relationships with those guys as their sort of go-to fight choreographers. So, that makes sense. And he's, been, yeah. he's also done the second unit directing, so the sort of action and fight scene directing for a number of Jet Li's movies as well. So mm-hmm. he's still working mm-hmm. in the industry. It's just, the, I mean... Not- directing a film yeah when you're talking about is this his fault i do think it's poorly directed but in the way that a lot of the stuff was was at this time Mm -hmm. i mean he's sort of getting in on a lot of like this movie looks bad in the way a lot of movies from this era look bad the camera's doing way too much it's Mm -hmm. way too stylized um yeah this movie's this movie's bad you guys uh i mean it it I'm trying to remember when the Charlie's Angels movies. It's came a little out. bit before this, yeah. and this is very. I kept thinking about those as I was watching this. It's well, they 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 said that the inspiration for it was Charlie's Angels and the uh, the Enter tournament. The Dragon. Yeah, Enter the Dragon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was God. like that. They're like, what if we put those together <laughs> and bikinis? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I also did... read that the most of the the crew did not speak English and there were yes. only like a handful of people who did speak English. Yes. So I know communication on set was also 
tricky for working with the actors yeah. who didn't speak Chinese. direction was through translation so, yeah uh, yeah it's that's definitely gonna add less a than layer ideal. of difficulty to I, the already i, I had seen that project. i was looking at this too i wanted to say this right but i think there was literally like two people who spoke yeah. both so you had yes. two yeah, it was people like an ad and one other person yeah you literally only had two people who could who could translate for an AKA the crew. most important job on set, probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's really a problem. And, and so yeah. I do think that doesn't help at all. Also, mm -hmm. it's another martial arts movie, Lisbon, where they don't cast a lot of martial artists. And the, I noticed. The yeah. one martial artist they do cast has the only good fight scene in the movie. He does, and that was happening simultaneous with the, the volleyball. volleyball scene. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. because yeah. I love that they had to break it up, and it's like, Didn't no, I, I just stick on the martial arts. We don't need to see the. Because I was going was like, I, that, that was about halfway through the movie, and I'm going, oh shit, this guy's doing yeah. some good martial arts. Because this is yeah. Kane Kasugi, mm -hmm. son of our beloved Sho Kasugi. Uh, yes. star of Pray for Death and all the ninja movies of the '80s, and of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, both Kane and his brother are in Pray for Death. Yes. Uh, yeah. And we'll be talking about show in a couple months again with Black Eagle, the movie he made with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. We get a, we get a yeah. show Kasugi JCVD team up in a few months. Oh, for very our, excited. For we also that. stand JCVD. In we do. Time. And so <laughs> we we're do. in a few months, we'll be doing our, our, our next JCVD month. So I think we're all looking Actually, forward to that. It's thanks to this podcast that I know who JCVD is. There you go, man. If there's because one... I had never seen any of his movies. If there's mm -hmm. one good thing that comes out of the show, it is <laughs> us bringing more JCVD to the world because that man is a treasure. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Anyway, Kane Kasugi, not an amazing actor, but a goddamn no. great martial artist. And it is when they let him go, I was like, oh, I kind of like this section of the movie, except mm -hmm. for cutting to horrible volleyball with and this will take me right to the first shot of the movie some truly dreadful cgi in this movie yes yes even yeah. by weaker mid-2000 standards this is pretty shitty cgi pretty, pretty bad. bad yeah and oh, they yeah. use so much cgi like if they just didn't use as much it probably wouldn't be i mean it'd still be bad but it wouldn't be as bad mm -hmm. i agree but they use so much cgi like That's... the broken mirror shit was that so was bad awful. that was awful. also not how mirrors break no no <laughs> what the fuck no and that's the, that's kind of one of my biggest issues with this movie in general is mm -hmm. in the way of dead or alive as we talked about the game sort of being a shitty knockoff of mortal Kombat, and this movie being a shitty mm -hmm. knockoff of mortal Kombat. this movie kind of wants to have it both ways where it wants to be a legitimate martial arts movie like enter the dragon but also mm -hmm. an insane thing. And I'm like, but you're not going to the full extent of, I love, I think we were both fans of that Mortal Kombat movie that was out last year, Lisbon. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that movie yeah. Oh, yeah. isn't trying to be a legitimate martial arts movie. It's a crazy fantasy superpower movie. Yes, yes. The man gets buzzsawed in half. Right. No, and it fucking rules. <laughs> that's not martial arts, baby. No, that, <laughs> that's that, just that's, It was Kombat. with a hat, too. I love that part. It was so good. That movie, yeah. that movie's awesome. I love yeah, all the, insane, the insane violence in that movie. But that's the thing about this movie is like, okay, I kept going, so do these people have powers? It's not clear. No, it, 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 from scene to scene. It, but then the end of the movie also has the villain stealing their non-existent powers powers okay through we, a pair of ugly we, ass we, sunglasses yes. okay does he actually download their martial arts or do the sunglasses just tell him it what they're it, going it's to an do accurate, accurate yeah. prediction of okay. the moves so he's not down like via the and matrix downloading what... martial arts into his brain he's downloading it into his glasses he is like, i don't know if you guys are familiar with the character taskmaster from marvel but there is a character in Big Marvel way. Comics who his entire ability is he's able to study the fighting styles of the Marvel superheroes so he can perfectly counter anything they would be able to do. That okay. is the character of Taskmaster. It's gotcha. He himself does not have martial arts training. He is just, through technology, able to learn how Captain America fights and then be able to beat him. And I so gotcha. I'm watching this going, so they're just having this be crappy Taskmaster. Uh, because yes. he doesn't wear dumb sunglasses, he has a cool okay. metal skull mask and a cape and a sword. So, but what about uh, satin pajamas? Does Taskmaster <laughs> wear oh, satin pajamas? Everything. By the way, folks, it, you knew it was only a little bit of time before Eric Roberts was back on the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Eric Roberts so reads as the guy having a midlife crisis who's into Asian <laughs> shit. Uh-huh. Like the guy who yeah. has really uh, appropriated culture, and he's like, I wear a uh-huh. kimono now, and I'm drinking mm-hmm. my sake, and he's mm-hmm. dating an underage Chinese girl or something like that. Like mm-hmm. it's just like he's got every- a yin yang tattoo on his back. It's you it's know? The, it's the kind Lower of back. yeah, it's the kind of problematic American who's like, uh-huh. oh, I really get Asian culture, man. It's Steven Seagal, he- basically. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> is uh- what Eric Roberts is playing, and yet still. He's one of the better actors in this movie because, as we talk about, he's a pretty good actor. This is a horribly written part. It but is. The, yeah, the guy is part. not bad. It's just, my God. It just, I, yeah, especially by comparison. Like, he's not just reading the lines, you know, for, you know, no. flatly. Uh, I do think, I, 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 do, I did keep thinking as I was watching this because we know the guy makes 30 to 35 movies a year. That mm-hmm. every take end with him going, "Are we good? Because I got to get to two other sets right now." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm super busy. Well, I'm so learning my lines. But yeah, uh, I I will say, what would have been, what would you have preferred? Having a main villain who at least has the basic understanding of acting and has some acting chops, or the final villain having any amount of martial arts whatsoever because I mean, all of the fight scenes involving him at the end of the movie were awful and boring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's tough. Yeah. I would say overall my note for this movie is I just wish there were more martial arts people. So I would lean yeah. to that but because all the fights are pretty poorly done. There are mm-hmm. like moments of cool, but they're all, I don't like how any of them are constructed because it is that thing we, we really chafe against where it is like, you can see they're only teaching people certain moves at a time or they're doing stuff mm-hmm. to hide uh, mm-hmm. uh, stunt people or way too much wire foo, which is the mm-hmm. oh, very... So well, much. this is this is uh, Crashing Tiger, Hidden Dragon was 2000. So this is a little bit in the wake of that The opening well. scene where yes. Kasumi runs atop all the guys and off the thing, I was like, Crouching Tiger! I literally yeah. just shouted Crouching Tiger, which... Yeah. Uh, I think we t- also shouted that. Well, because Crouching down. Tiger, yeah. Hidden Dragon is a great movie, but it's another example of a movie where everything in its wake is god-awful. Yes. That was a yes. very specific movie, but all the stuff where people go, great, that's how we make martial arts movies. Like, no, please, no. stop, no. don't. I think it's like Crouching Tiger and then Hero. Hero, the, I was about uh, to say with Jet Li. Yeah. Those are the kind of the two I love that both have mm-hmm. that aesthetic. Almost anything else that tried to do it Aside from the the most recent thing that I thought did a great Crouching Tiger kind of scene was Shang-Chi, the opening scene of Shang-Chi where it's true. his yeah. parents meet and sort of have that like romantic fight. I thought this is oh, the first time yeah, I've good... seen like a sequence that actually properly uses that kind of aesthetic again. Yeah, and it's like mythical, like poetic kind of like Yeah, it's, it's Yeah, it's it's used to help with the storytelling not just to be flashy and that's, yeah, that that exactly. movie is about magic and fantastical stuff with martial mm-hmm. arts here mm-hmm. this is in the wake of charlie's angels which used a lot of stuff and i was not really into those movies no um because i think uh, we but... were looking for more action driven stuff but those were kind mm-hmm. of those were a lot of this era is um chinese films influencing american action cinema Yes, because lo- people grew up on uh, Asian cinema of the 70s. And right, 80s and, and so that's where yeah. you're seeing a lot of that, but they're not understanding or really willing to do. I think an example mm-hmm. of something that does work, of course, is The Matrix, right? Where you're going right. like, oh, what? but the smart thing there is that the Wachowskis went and got Yoon Woo but- Ping and amazing uh, choreographers and also beat those actors up until they did know all those fights. Like yeah, I mean, I, I would assume that the rehe- the like training process, if we know anything about how Keanu trains for yeah. movies, it was probably extensive. Yeah, uh, I mean, there was for, like there was like a full actors. year of fight training for that movie. And it right, shows exactly. Cause I cause doubt doing this movie everything. got the same thing. No, no, uh, no, no. I think they talked about like they had like a couple, Jamie Presley did like a month of kickboxing training or something like that. R- right, you yeah. Know? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Jamie Presley trained in boxing and kickboxing. Holly Valens trained in movie tie but just oh uh they trained I, four months before they went to china they said i did not see any muay thai from her no yeah i was i was no. confused that's by not... that. i was like she i mean 
no, no. What if that's Muay Thai? She put an old man in a suitcase. Like that's not. <laughs> that was insane. Let's talk about that how each of these characters are so introduced. Great. <laughs> yes, each let's of talk these about characters. The is, so yes, we start with, uh, and, and this is all once again in sort of the video stuff, video game stuff. Is we start with this very like I'm going. What is this like? Ancient China or something like that. When we start with mm-hmm. Kasumi or feudal Japan or whatever this it, is. It seems like it'd be Japan. They all have very Japanese sounding names. That's so true. I mean, that's, that's the, my assumption. I, well, and they said that if she leaves, she's a shinobi, which is a Japanese well, there you term, go. not yeah. a Chinese term. There but here's go. the thing about this movie is, I don't know that this movie cares about any of this difference. It is, no. the whole movie is basically Asian shit, right? It's sort of right, the, the yeah. attitude of the movie. Um, yeah. And so, but yeah. So this starts with, she's a princess and... Mm-hmm. She's supposed to princess of a purple clan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a love lot. the color. I did. I did actually like the color design. I will say that. Yeah. I did think, oh, these are cool. It's a it's a very colorful movie, which I appreciate. Mm. I, yes, it, it is. I, one thing I can say, it's very vivid. The mm-hmm. film is very vivid. It is not one of the grimy, gray scaled sort of action movies that we often complain about. I'll give them that. Ye- yeah. Uh, yes. but the yeah, and so. She wants to leave this village, but they won't let her. Yeah, because her brother disappeared. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, they the he went to the last dead or alive competition right. and never came back. And they said that he died. And she said, "Did you find a body?" And they said, "No." And then she's like, "Well, then he's not dead." Yeah. And so right. she's like, "Well, I'm gonna go find him." And they're like, "If you leave, you like all of a sudden we're against you." And it's like. Oh, Okay, yeah, that whatever. I don't understand. It's like we don't. Also, want to... where are their parents? You know. Yeah, they're the prince and princess. We never deal with like a king or an emperor or anything. Also, can we talk about the uh, her friend or no her the the lavender haired woman who who's, oh is, the white lady who's playing a Japanese the, lady who I looked up is a Norwegian actress uh, playing a, a Japanese is character. Is that? Uh... Which, Ayani or Ayan? Ayane. Ayane. Something like that. Yeah. Because uh, that's, yeah. yeah, Natasia Malfe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who's no, also. No. Very Japanese. Who's yeah. also in another god awful martial arts driven movie from this time, Electra. One of the absolute oh boy. worst <gasps> comic book movies ever Uh-oh. made. That Ooh, yeah. movie's so bad. It's, it's almost as bad as the Daredevil movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I am, it might be worse. It might, I am, be, it might uh, be worse. Uh, uh, Oh, it's definitely worse than the Daredevil movie, which is terrible. Neither That's... neither of those movies. Are no, and yeah. and and Daredevil is my favorite Marvel comic of all time, and I love Daredevil and Electra. So both of those movies really were like stabbed. It was in the a heart. personal attack against you. It really was. <laughs> I need you to know that they were like, you know what? There's this dude named John Campbell. Let's fuck with him. Yeah. Well, it is kind of just like, how do we absolutely destroy two of the best characters in all of comics? Like, uh, yeah. Um, thank God that that's been rectified by great Daredevil stuff that's been out in years since. But um, mm-hmm. my God. Uh, anyway, similar, I think, there too. And I think she's supposed to be Typhoid Mary in that, which is also sad because that's a great Daredevil villain. Um mm. She's in a lot of uh, listen. She's in a lot of action shelf movies. So. Yep, that makes sense. Well, she acts like wet cardboard, so it makes. She's sense. terrible, but yeah, sadly, so awful. so is Devin Aoki as Kasumi, who yeah, yeah. also yeah. like just yeah, she's just drywall. Yeah, she she's really not. is. She's very bad. She has a run here. She acts from like basically two thousand three to two thousand nine, and then end of acting. So she yeah. has a six year run. But because I, I remember seeing her in, she was in Too Fast, Too Furious. Mm-hmm. She's in Sin City. The best use of her is in Sin City, where she plays Miho, a character who does not talk. That's I remember. Right. Yeah, that's what I remember. Because from, she does yeah. have a cool look, and she mm-hmm. is. She oh, does she's have, beautiful. She's beautiful. She can do the physicality of it. So playing silent, badass Miho, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah um, good use. But when she starts talking in this movie, you're like, you can't say lines i mean she any scene between her and kane kasugi who once again i think is an amazing martial artist but a a weak actor um Mm. those scenes are death and then also yeah let's add purple haired woman in too and you mean uh, you mean when kane kasugi says the line as your brother's best friend i must accompany you i wrote that down too (laughs) i wrote that down too and also that keeps coming up it keeps coming up the whole 
it's the first 20 minutes of the film is dialogue like that. Your brother. Yeah. And then, of course, spoiler, I guess, when the brother is alive, she ta- She literally goes, brother? Sister? And he's like, sister? And you're just like, I think You I are get- my brother. It's yeah. like the, the Black Dynamite flashback. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you are my 12-year-old brother, and you are hot as a kite. <laughs> That is, that is exactly what that movie is making fun of. We talk yeah. about this all the time, Lisman, that we hate anything that's like, as your father. Like, yes. who talks like that? Nobody I'm going to start talking like that in real life. I just love the idea of just like, I I am your friend, so I will tell you. Just like, who t- it, it's bad writing. It's the kind of yes. writing you write on a first draft and then uh-huh. change. But even, yeah. even if, I was just thinking about, it's also a simple change because, uh, uh, as your brother's, even if he just said your simple change to your brother was my best friend, so I have to protect. Even mm-hmm. that is still kind of clunky, but it's a mm-hmm. little bit more natural. This, or movie, even I promised your brother I would look after you, which or something, which like we that, can yeah. then assume is uh, that well, was probably who would his best he friend. Asked- to you know look after his sister probably the person he trusts the most you know inference inference yada 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 uh i Uh, gotta say i uh i'm looking up the guys who wrote this movie uh yeah i noticed a few interesting things in there as well well did you look at the the gross brothers (laughs) seth and adam gross disgusting that's a that's a great (laughs) last name for them whose writing experience before this was as staff writers for bill nye the science guy Yep. Bill, 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 wow. Bill, 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 so, Bill. So they did Bill Nye the Science Guy first. Yeah. I just want to. I just want to like be a fly on the wall of the conversation where it's like, "Hey, Bill. Yeah, we're gonna have to stop doing the show. <laughs> we, we've got this movie coming up. So yeah. Well, they gonna... got babes in bikinis. Yeah. Got to go. Bye. They wrote a movie after that. Between their work on Bill Nye the Science Guy and this, they wrote a movie called Devour, which okay. I think is a future action shelf movie. Starring like uh, supernatural hunk Jensen Ackles. <gasps> oh wow. boy! You know he is—he is the preferred brother in this household oh, between the true. two of them. And he's—he's he's, uh, he so he's not looking. been on the action shelf before, so he, we gotta—he has gotta it. Get him. Uh, I, and I was gonna say he's the preferred brother because you're not insane. Of course he's the. Be- are you at your? I mean, it's right. like there's. There, I'm sorry. There's no competition. He's the infinitely better actor. Um, he is. So now they cool. well, also wrote for America's Funniest. Oh, America's Funniest People. People. That's yes. not even America's Funniest That was home the videos. Dave Couillet hosted spinoff. Yeesh. Yeah. Yeesh. Because people, I think people forget that America's Funniest Home Videos was the number one show on television. The no, it was. That that show had on every American household. I mean. It was. I have never heard my dad laugh more than watching people get hit by stuff and fall down, which I also inherited. Same there is here. Nothing funnier Man, than that, that was, that was appointment <laughs> television when I was a kid. We had to watch that. And it was, and it's, I always thought, that's sort of like before YouTube, that was what we had. Yes. Yeah. Was, that's what I was about to say, yeah. I mean, it kind of was, at that time, it was an ingenious show. Nobody had ever thought to do that, basically. Mm-hmm. But then they and tried I, to... I mean, people are also submitting this in, so it's not even like you're really, like, exploiting people. People right. are like, oh, no, this thing happened. We should all laugh at it together. Now, the thing you know? that's crazy... It felt very wholesome. The thing that's crazy about that, like I said, is then they tried to do America's Funniest People, no. where they brought no. people on to be funny, hosted by Dave Couillet. Once again, they'll just get the other guy mm-hmm. from Full House. And... Yeah. Arlene Sorkin, the voice of Harley Quinn, the original voice of Harley Quinn, was his what? co-host on there. Arlene what? Sorkin, yeah, yeah, weird, yeah. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. weird, weird. Isn't that just asking comedians to come onto a show and do like a two-minute set? No, like, no, but these aren't professional. They're not comedians. professional they're comedians. Just people. Then they're not doing jokes. They're doing funny things. Whatever that means. I don't know. I don't know what that means. But let's talk about J.F. Lofton, who's the other writer on this movie. Why not? Because his career is way weirder uh, in terms of his route to this because he is a big Hollywood screenwriter. He his big breakout movie was Pretty Woman. He wrote Pretty Woman, a massive smash hit romantic comedy. He then wrote Under Siege, the only good Steven Seagal movie. And Under Siege 2. Uh, actually, he's just credited with creating characters on that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. um, but he did write Chain Reaction with Keanu Reeves. And stay tuned, future episode later, I think this year, The Hunted with Christopher Lambert that he also directed, which we'll be talking about. Oh, uh, there it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a, a, a favorite movie and actually a movie that weirdly is part of the friendship of myself and Ibrahim Mustafa. 
is well, our go. shared love of the movie The Hunted. He also created the TV show VIP. Does anyone remember this? Nope. This was a syndicated action show starring Pamela Anderson. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That okay. Sounds... About, about, I think this is how you get to Dead or Alive because that was very it's much also a, a There's video a game. video game of VIP? There is, yeah. Oh, no. Because this oh, was no. a real hot girls kicking ass show. Uh, I mean, and... we love to see it. You, I don't think that's true. I what? I'd I, rather see I'd rather see hot women kicking ass than hot men kicking ass. Well, okay, fair enough. I you think it, I, 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 I'm torn on that because this movie is a perfect example of how I don't want to see hot women kicking ass. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's sort of the thing where it's well, like, it, it all depends on if it's being filmed by the male gaze or the female gaze. If this ex- movie was filmed by the female gaze, it would be way better because, because I, it would actually be good. A movie I know, <laughs> or at least less exploitative. Yeah. That's, it, that's it. Exactly. If, let me. I'm sorry see women in hot bikinis fighting than men shirtless fighting sure i mean as I, a like, person i i, 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 I live my life that's why i'm saying like i agree with that in concept but not in this execution because no right. it was ex- that one the scene where it's like uh christy is fighting uh what in the hotel room no well because i do no, want to get to my, that we're no, right at the beginning no, she's fighting the the dead dude's daughter Oh, who, like, Helena created the whole thing, oh, and yeah. there's that shot, and it's like lining up so that you see Chrissy, but it's between like the thigh gap of the other girl, and her ass is most of the frame. Yeah, that was that made me so angry. Well, that was like this is. There's also, but just, again, that is one, that is not interesting, not interesting shot, and no. two, we're like. I get it. She's got an ass. Like oh, you've the, already showcased the, it enough. This, this isn't even good. And this also, movie's not flattering for anybody. No. no, this movie's obsession with ass specifically. There are so many just cuts to close-ups of asses in it. Yes, shots yes. that you know? starts with people's ass. And, and again, that that is the that is the games. Like, yeah. oh, fully. It's it's not subtle. Again, the, the movie is tame. Compared to sure. the game, yes. Well, I don't know if you saw this. There was apparently more explicit stuff that got cut to keep it from yes. getting an R rating. Yeah, the hotel room fight scene. She was supposed to be fully nude the entire time, yeah. and then they were like, uh, "Actually, we want the, we want this to be PG thirteen, but yeah. don't worry, you can watch those scenes." On the deleted scenes on the DVD. Oh, good. I'm so glad I bought the DVD. No, I didn't buy the DVD. Of course not. I watched this for free on YouTube. That's how mm-hmm. bad this Oh, it was for is. free on YouTube? We watched it on Freevee. That yeah. also is fine. Too. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. This is one of those movies that so has no value that it's literally on every single free video service. Yeah. Because it just, yeah. this is one of, we talk about these movies every once in a while on the action stuff list, where clearly a studio is just like, this movie has no value, so just fucking whatever. You can watch it anywhere. Can we uh can we talk about how the the invitations to DOA? Can we talk about They're how, nuts. They're nuts because uh, uh, well, the, well, batarangs. the batarangs. They're basically batarangs with like uh like a little screen, an LCD screen yeah. or something. So you're invited. Yeah. Uh, uh, sweet 16. So who's throwing these? And like <laughs> it's unclear. Um, How many people were invited that actually just got murdered by one of these? Right, exactly. Another thing too, because yeah. they do, they like fly at people. They're jagged edge things that then the like fir- whoosh, the fir- stick in the, the side. The first one is uh, the princess. Mm-hmm. She catches it in mid air because she she's... leaps off of this mountain castle and deploys <laughs> also very Batman-y, a hang glider <laughs> out of a backpack. Yeah, and she and that's when she catches it. So yeah. somebody knew she was gonna jump off of the cliff yeah. and glide down, and so they waited. And, and then this is threw. before they had the nanobots injected. That's into true. Them. Yeah, yeah there's a whole nanobot subplot. Yeah. Um, well, nanobot is, subplot is this this is a real nanobot heavy time. I will say. Oh yeah, in terms that's of, true. of science fiction was big into nanobots at this yeah. point. Uh, yeah, let's talk about how each of these characters are introduced, and then we get this very video game thing where it goes to three panels. Of her, uh-huh. and goes Kasumi, and what is this like martial arts princess or whatever? They all get a little yeah. short. Then sure. we cut to Jamie Presley, who just, I mean, just right away, it's ass bikini, damn. Yeah. She's got an American flag on her. That's bikini. how you know she's American. Exactly. That's how you know she's American. Otherwise, I'd be confused. And Jamie Presley, American. who's already from the South, I feel like is doing an even more exaggerated. Southern yeah, they're like, accent. you know, just bump it just up a little ham bit. Ham it up. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. She's already from North Carolina. And I do, I felt so bad for her in this movie because 
uh, around the same time she's on My Name is Earl, and she's so yeah. fucking funny on My Name is Earl. Yeah. She's yeah, very she's fun. She's one of the – I think we've talked about this before, uh, and I've talked about it just in general with people where particularly this is the case with women, I think. more. I think it happens with men, but more so with women, where when you're this attractive, it's this idea about like, well, they can't be funny. <laughs> I mean, I think there is women, sort of thing. Yeah. Women? Yeah. Be – Funny? Women no. Be, what? No, I women don't think so. Funny, women can't it, be funny. That's weird. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Women believe can't that's be true. funny. I don't know and anybody then, who's ever said that. Before. Women yeah. can't be funny is a thing. And then I think there's a thing where it's like, well, some women can be funny, but not the hot ones. They can't yeah. be funny too. That's yeah. not fair. Why yeah. would they? They need... can't be hot and, and I, funny. Like I said, I think there's some of that with men, but it's even more the case. But I just think this movie in no way asks anything of her at all, no, other than to just absolutely be absolutely not crazy hot right like and, right, right. i mean That's and it. i mean there's no question she's tra- i mean her body is amazing uh, yeah. she is fucking she's ripped ripped yeah, yeah it is movie. i mean that's i'm like th- damn girl you really did put in that work though that's the thing too where it's like beyond like whatever objectifying male gaze i'm looking at it like i look at a jcvd body or something like this mm-hmm. where you go damn she's honed into a weapon in this thing man yeah um, oh yeah b- more so than any of the women in this movie and, she yeah i don't see anybody else is as ripped as she is no yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, good for her because she has to spend so much of the movie in a bikini, as everyone yeah. does. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, she's introduced. She's a professional wrestler, which is yes. uh, really upset me from like a fighting standpoint. To go, well, that's that's not really fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then I also love that she never does any wrestling stuff. She just does martial arts. Then, yep. She, doesn't she suplex some people? She might Does suplex she? somebody. She suplexes. Uh, she oh, might okay. do that too, but it's mostly she doesn't do a lot of. She doesn't fight like a wrestler. It's not something yeah, in no, like other fighting, fighting movies style. where everybody's using their own sort of unique fighting styles. Yeah, yeah. This movie didn't really you literally put in that shouted word. "suplapa" when the suplexing happened. I thought that was from the video game. No, we, it, there was it, it was in the movie. Oh, okay, there was there was suplex. Oh, okay. I was, I that's the only that. wrestling move I know. <laughs> it's the suplex. Yeah, um, that's it. Don't know anything. Oh else. my god, it's Jamie Presley with a suplex. You know, um, <laughs> woo. Uh, and apparently they did the use thing? the announcer voice actor from the game for all the announcing, which I figured Great. was kind of the case just based yeah. on the sound of it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so she she's out on a yacht, hanging out near vitamin beer. water but not drinking it i love the mm-hmm. shot of her with the vitamin water logos then she grabs clearly a paps blue ribbon uh, paps. that they have taken the label off <laughs> i'm like great you see where got what got paid where right like yeah yeah but i just love yeah. the idea of she's uh, three untouched bottles of vitamin water just near her to just mm-hmm. put in a shot um, you have to have and to hold when her yacht you know. is attacked by pirates mm-hmm. the comic oh. relief pirates I- I'm not going to lie. The pirates are probably my favorite part of this movie because they show up here and then they show up at the end when and they, I love them. They're they, so cartoonish and When they silly. showed up at the end, I thought, have they, is this, this is the same waters as Yeah, that's yeah. what I was also wondering. I'm like, uh, guys? Well, Jamie was she Presley already was, really close by? Yeah, she was lounging just off the coast of DOA. Well, that's weird because she gets on the plane with everybody else. Yeah, then why would you get on the plane? Well, you know, from formality you know okay. yeah yeah, sure. yeah i just gotta play by the rules hang yeah. out with her dad yeah uh, exactly because yeah. her dad is also invited Hulk which is Hogan. nuts uh that dude is brolic as fuck <laughs> yeah that guy is that guy must be a, an actual wrestler right yeah, yeah he I, was I he is so. he is the Kevin you look Nash. up beefcake that's him oh yeah his Kev- arms were the size of my head oh he played the russian in the punisher movie oh okay that follows who's also yeah. just a big beefy guy who throws Frank Castle around in that movie. That makes sense. But he is a WWE guy. Yeah, yeah that makes, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, uh, you know, I love how supportive the dad is. Let me tell you. For There's a lot of shitty dads in a lot oh of media. God. I love how supportive this dad is. He wants his daughter to do well in the fight, even if he has to fight her. And when it's when Christy is, is like joking around being like, oh yeah, we're totally together. Like mm-hmm. we're sleeping together. He's not like, what the fuck? He's just like, okay. I got. I should go right. That, that, and then when that, she's getting acupuncture from the other girl, he's like, "Wait, well, what about Christy?" Yeah, and I was like, "We love a supportive dad who's like, hey, maybe I, I like, just want to be a part of your life. One person, you know, whatever that is. You know, you commit to that one person. Mm-hmm. He's, he's yeah, he's, weirdly progressive. We, we he's, love the dad. He's got progressive views about sexuality. Uh, he mm-hmm. also supports monogamy, or at least mm-hmm. being honest with your partners about exactly. that. Exactly. Uh, I the, the it's it's a weird thing where it's Jamie Presley that's being shitty about the perception that she might be in some that sort is of same sex yeah. relationship. 
Um, yeah. because God especially with how hot Christy is, I'd be like, yeah, what's up? I mean, yeah. I'm not a good example for that, but still. <laughs> but it's like it's it's that classic thing that particularly the '90s and 2000s stuff has, where it's like, oh no, I I, I don't oh. even want the perception. Oh, why, Are you crazy? Oh. I would not. I'm oh. not gay. Yeah. How could you say that? That's the worst thing you could assume about me. It's like, yeah. hey, shut up. Yeah, it's yeah, you'd I, be that's, so lucky. That's early 2000s. Um, this guy's uh, wrestling name, by the way, is Diesel. And Great. Uh, mm-hmm. that tracks. His cinematic acting debut was as <laughs> Super Shredder in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze. Great. A movie that has we... come up on this podcast before. Well, uh, <laughs> it's a classic, John. I, I do kind of have a lot of affinity for it. Anyway, I mean, I have a lot of nostalgia for it. Let's cut to Christy now, who's in. Woo! Yeah, where is this? Somewhere, Hong somewhere. Kong or something? I like think, that? yeah, she was. They like. It wrapped re- somewhere in Hong Kong. Yeah, it's because it reads as like a modern neon lit Asian city, which I think is Hong Kong in this in case. Yeah. Um, I think they say it's Hong Kong. I think they do. Yeah, that's what that's sticking out of my head. Now, this is Holly Valance playing her, who's an Australian model and singer. Uh, okay. And she is a master thief, right? Uh, Slash yes. assassin. Slash yeah, assassin. She, she moonlights as an assassin. Yeah. You know? Great. She, so she, she, she dabbles in it. But so bit. she's supposed to be the slinky, stealthy one, right? Uh, I and, guess so. And they don't do enough with that. But this no. is, if you thought the other stuff was wild, get ready. Because <laughs> this this whole sequence where the Interpol or whoever these guys are, some sort of federal agents come in to arrest her when she's getting out of the shower. And yeah. oh Ooh. boy, yeah, this whole sequence where she's in her towel and she's like, well, can I get dressed first? And literally every shot... Uh, oh every every reaction close up of every guy in the scene is a I've got a boner but I don't want to know any let anyone <laughs> oh! know about it. <gasps> oh! I just I don't know what this world is where mm. men see an attractive woman and like lose control of themselves. Yeah, yeah. I've never literally... witnessed this in reality where it's like I can't function, focus. Oh. I've never seen tutors before. Yeah, that's the thing where you talk about like, yeah, if, if if you're over the age of like 18 or even like, then the idea that you're just like stopped in your tracks and going like, oh, what? Oh, what? A Nick and, w- well, and, the, and we'll talk about is... Weatherby later, but Jesus oh, Christ. Jesus, if we have to. Um, <laughs> This, I mean, this movie is for teenagers yeah, yeah actually like it, i will say that this movie that is what is believe it or to. not our normal audience of problematic divorced dads this movie might be too immature for them even it they, might be yeah. i mean some might still enjoy it but i do think it is sort of like it really is like 12 year old boys is the target yes. well, i mean audience. it is a pg-13 movie so yeah, you know exactly. there's your audience i feel yeah. like it, i feel like boys, had they definitely. included the nudity then you'd be chasing the problematic divorced dad so i do think it right. is because this i do think about movies like this in a world where you can access porn so mm-hmm. uh instantly it is like this is a very juvenile idea of a sexy movie Yes. Where yes, it is definitely. just the idea of like women in bikinis would be the draw to a film. It's like, girl, have you ever gone to the beach? Like, yeah, what's that, happening? That's yeah. the thing that kind of got me. And I feel like that was always the case when it's just like, but there's hotties. And I'm like, there's hotties anywhere and everywhere in pop culture. I don't know why. Like, I'm going to go to the theater to see this movie because there's attractive women in it. And it, but it's a shitty movie otherwise. Right. Well, you know, it's January. Beaches aren't open. It's too cold. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's a shark on there's the loose. There's a shark on the loose. You know. <laughs> that the mayor is like, there's no shark. There, uh, there's lots of reasons. <laughs> These to beaches see this are movie. staying open, everyone. Believe me. The By the way, the real villain of Jaws, of course, that mayor. Is the mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, the shark's just doing his thing. Shark... I mean, did that movie emotionally scar me to the point where I am deathly afraid of open ocean and sharks? Yes, it did. I think it, it, uh, do I, I blame the shark? No. Shark, shark's I mean, just being a shark. Utterly homicidal for a shark, I would say, especially for how big it is. And, like, it is the, the sharks it, don't don't really want to eat people. That's, no, like, a last resort. Like, uh, too much processed foods. It's not good for your diet. Something was wrong with that shark. There's no question. It, well, needed, we know, it needed to be dealt with. We know that the, the shark lineage, eventually <laughs> one of the shark's children's <laughs> children does <laughs> seek revenge on the wife, if I'm not I mistaken, in Jaws 4. Oh, uh, you've got that right. Uh, the wife yeah. and kids of Roy Scheider, Jesus. they go after Brody's family. How, right. We need. We should do that movie in here. How have we not done Jaws for the <laughs> I, Yeah, yeah, we should. That's, do. A, that's an action that shelf movie. Is maybe the most 
uh, buck wild thing I've ever seen in it. Well, we got to do a no. shark month. I think we've talked about that. We've got to do a shark month on this show. Yeah, we do love, yeah. We do love a shark movie on this show. Basically, the Jaws franchise is the Hatfields and McCoys, but it's, it's uh, the, the Brody Brodies family and the and sharks. sharks. Yeah. So you're going to watch all of those in the morning, the day you record, because I'm not watching any of that. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, we can do Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue Sea. We can, we can do... The Meg. The Meg, yeah. I mean, Stay these th- are a little bit higher budget. These than are we higher, but deeply blue sea. Well, but... when does when does Discovery do Shark Month or whatever? Oh right. yeah, we could do. Yeah, we you we sh- could. You we should, should do it in tandem it. with. Yeah, that. yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. We're the yeah. alternative. We're doing. They're talking about real sharks. We're talking about the shittiest fake sharks that cinema has to <laughs> offer. But there are like six Deep Blue Sea sequels too. So, oh, uh, Jesus. what was the name of the one that was with the shark in the lake? Was it was Shark Lake. Shark Lake. lake? Shark lake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't work hard on that title. That's exactly what you think it is. It didn't work hard on that title <laughs> at all. Um, so this is, we get a scene here where uh, the big move here is she kicks a guy's gun up in the air and throws her bra up in the air. And I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure the physics of this don't make sense to me. I don't think physics exists. Let me tell you, every time I've thrown all. a bra up in the air to try and, and, and put it on has not worked out for me. Yeah. Just, you know, it just, yeah. it's this, it's, 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 a, it's an idea that you're like, Somebody pitched this, and they're like, oh, that's cool. I could see the this being lifted perfectly. directly from the video game. Yeah, because the bra land. I mean, this the, is, the thing this is about how it, men assume women put bras on. I just, well, just so that everyone is clear, this stra- is what they assume. The straps they do. of the bra have to be spaced out enough and then not mm-hmm. move, basically. Like they mm-hmm. would have to be rigid so they could go down over her arms, right? They have to yeah. slide mm-hmm. down her arms. Yeah. And then also. The idea that the and then, cups well, would then land. When you put land... your arms down, let me tell you, the cups are going to be above your boob. That's and the then you're going to have to me. like awkwardly shuffle it down. Unless thing. you're really flat chested, in which case that would probably but work. That's, I'm pretty I mean, sure she wasn't. She's I... not very flat chested. No. So, yeah. But that's the thing is like the rigid thing. And then, yeah, the cups have to land perfectly and be exactly lined up with her boobs. And then, mm-hmm. and then, and then also, she's catching a handgun. <laughs> yes, she is also doing And then that. she also holds the gun to the man's crotch and is like, by the way, can you buckle me up? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That Great. is the sequence. Uh, oh and God. apparently in the original version, full nudity, full on, yeah, full body, full frontal nudity. So, you know. What? I feel bad for her because, I mean, that means they did shoot that, which means she did have to do that. I'm like, did they at least give her like some like modesty underwear? Like, did we have full <laughs> snatch out? I, no I, I, this doesn't I'm... seem like the movie that's going to have, a, 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 in your words, full snatch out. Um <laughs> You know what I mean? It's, it, it feels like, I always feel like when you get to that level of full nudie, that's more like indie, artsy movie. This mo- yeah. These kind of movies are just interested in boobs. They don't really want to get to, like, the full actual body of a woman. Mm-hmm. The full yeah. spread the eagle full... is not yeah. on display. This is not a penthouse produced film. Um, right, yeah. 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 Uh, we do all, almost get full frontal male nudity. I we was do. Sh- that that actually shocked me more than anything, simply because you would think this movie, which is another movie, as we brought up before, that is a very quote unquote sexy movie that is also completely afraid of sex, um, mm-hmm. absolutely yes, terrified terrifying. of actual sex. Yes, uh, it's because yes. it's or as, intimacy in general. Well, that's yes. it because it's it's that thing I know about a lot of these where it's like as sexy as it is. There's nothing that actually goes into actual sex or intimacy, as you're saying. It's all just no. the idea of, like, sexy bodies and sexy people. There's no, yeah. like, now we're going to have sex. Then the movie would be like, oh, no, no, no. That's well, even just, like, the, at, the display of intimacy. The display of intimacy doesn't need nudity or even sex to no. be... To f- feel intimate. The, you know? the, the uh, sexiest movies are not necessarily explicit movies. There's a reason yeah. I... Uh, I mean... I love a lot of like '40s movies, and they're like they're they're I think actually legitimately hot, in a way that's not even though nobody's taking their clothes off because it's all just in performance and dialogue and stuff, right? Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. I feel like yeah. sometimes, uh, and we've talked about this on the show. Sometimes when you have like graphic sex scenes in a movie, I'm more just like I'm starting to think about things like you're talking, where I'm just going like, uh, oh, this man, actor this must had be to do this. Scene. Yeah, this is yeah. this is a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I do think that I do think there is something to that. Um, and I also, there's something too. I also talk about this with like sad movies. When a movie wants to like bombard me with how sad something is, I'm like, oh, whatever. I feel the same way mm-hmm. about sexy movies. We're just like, look how hot these women are. I'm like, 
well, I'm not turned on because you're like slapping me in the face with this. And I'm going, yeah, it, nah. it's it's a lazy shorthand is for for yeah. sexiness without yeah. actually putting in the work of understanding human connection. Uh, so this is the scene, though, where she gets in an elevator and, yes, jams an old man into a suitcase, which I love how, do, how does she do that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. He, it's so funny. He was probably just like, yeah, I'll, I'll go in a suitcase for you. Yeah. I mean, she's standing there in her underwear. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, because I, I like, and I thought that was up. the end of the beat when she gets in the elevator. She's in her underwear and an old man's like, oh, yeah, I was, think. I actually was shocked at the, at the restraint of them having him have a heart attack. I thought, I thought it was going to be like. The, she the, murdered him. Oh, no, he's no, no. like, oh my god, this hot lady in her underwear. I'm yeah. gonna die because I'm an old man, and I didn't think I would uh, see that again in my that's life. The, yeah. That's the kind of joke I would expect from this movie. Like the elevator would open, and he'd be dead, but like grinning. Yeah, that's, I'm shocked but, that they actually. Showed he's the very restraint. clearly pitching a tent, but instead yeah. he's just <laughs> in a fucking suitcase. I mean, this suitcase. So anyway, then she gets her invitation to the well island. i'm sorry you're glossing over how she gets onto her motorcycle where she full-on run and like jumps and mounts her fucking motorcycle and yeah. i was just like Ow. yeah yeah Ow. I, I and was... they did do a close-up on her butt sitting on the seat she, in case in, in case, case you, you were, worried were worried about it about not home. seeing enough of her butt because the tagline for this movie should be doa dead or alive dead ass <laughs> That should Damn. be what the tagline is. Yeah, I did. I did multiple times during the movie. Imagine the filmmakers going, "Damn!" <laughs> I said, "God damn!" I said, "God damn!" Yeah, yeah. So then everyone uh, is on the plane to DOA. Yes. Uh, yes. And this is where we meet a horribly annoying character. All the men in this movie are. Terrible. Are terrible, but oh. this guy is the worst. He I, is yeah. literally. We have him noted down as mediocre white man. Yeah, yeah, he is the perfect embodiment of mediocre white man. He's succeeding. the worst because the movie is trying to play him as like a charming rogue, and I just found him disgusting. He doesn't do any. Like and he doesn't not do anything. Hot either. No, he's like, actually. If you're gonna he's do not... that. Can we cast someone hot? Like yeah. if we're gonna if we're gonna objectify women. Let's let's make it equal. Give me some hot dudes because y'all really didn't give me much. No, they want they want to make this man who is unimpressive in every single way be able to get a hot woman because that is that's, what the audience well, I, wants yeah, I can't. to project. On. I will we need say people to believe that that is going to be the case, and you don't need to be a good person. Yeah, no, I also no, you need to lie constantly. I want to talk about this guy because this guy in real life has had some controversy as of late. Uh-oh. Yes. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Matthew Marsden is a noted anti-vaxxer. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he's also a fucking idiot. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, anti-vax actor Matthew Marsden blasts Hollywood. Uh, what, what does he say? Uh, blasts Hollywood for targeting conservatives. Says, quote, I am unvaccinated. And I won't lie about it. Conservatives Hollywood need to speak up against tyranny, and then we get canceled, he said. Is that is that because, tyranny? Is that what that looks like? Well, apparently, I love when people say that it's tyranny. I'm like, girl, can yeah. you look up the definition before yeah. you start throwing words around? Uh, now, he was in one of the Resident Evil movies, which is interesting. He was in one of the Resident Evil movies. And by the way, did you see this movie produced by Paul W.S. Anderson, director of the I Resident did, Evil I, franchise? I did see that, And yes, it, this yes. totally feels in the vein, because he also made Mortal Kombat and Monster Hunter. This totally feels... Yeah feels in the vein of Paul W.S. Anderson this movie. They made a Monster Hunter movie? They yeah, sure we almost did that, too. That We almost did and that. I think I'm surprised you did. You love Monster Hunter. I have played a lot of Monster Hunter. A yeah. lot. Well, we'll, I yeah. hate we'll that. get to ne- it. Next, month, next time we do it, we'll, we'll definitely because do it. Because Tekken uh, also almost made the list, too. We almost right. made, we almost did the Tekken movie. Um, <laughs> this <laughs> slotted out for Tekken. That, well, this was going to be Tekken, and then we ended up doing Dead or Alive. Which, watching this, I'm kind of glad we did, although I, do, I am curious about the Tekken movie, too. I, I'm morbidly curious, I would say. Um, so yeah. anyway, this guy's a huge piece of shit in real life is what I'm saying. And he's bitching Yay. because no one will hire him because he refuses to get vaccinated. Yeah, because they don't want to get Oh, COVID. no! Consequence! I am! Yeah, they won't cast me because of, yeah. Uh, because he he had he he got a little bit of a boost from doing five episodes on Reacher recently, 
And I think uh, that okay. that got him some resurgence. And then mm-hmm. he has basically destroyed all the goodwill of that He's, by being. A, he squandered his one opportunity yeah. to get back into the game. Yeah. 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 Great. Great job. Uh, you know, uh, he didn't listen to Eminem when he said, "You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow." True. He went, "Well, I'm not going to get vaccinated." Well, and also, and went, well, fuck off then. Uh, I actually, I love Reacher. I actually don't remember him on it, so I think he's a pretty forgettable he's character. Not that's because he's mediocre. Yeah, well, he's that's the thing kind of, about he kind of has a forgettable face. He you does, I mean? and that's the thing where I'm going like, yeah, if he's losing work, I don't think the industry's losing much. No. Do you know who he kind of looks like, though? Hmm. He looks like the dude from the X-Files. What's oh. His name? oh, the younger guy. The younger guy. No, that who, guy was way more attractive. That, I know, but they do kind of look alike. Wait, are you talking about uh, the evil? Alex. The, the uh, guy who ended up being evil, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the the, the his, young dude. His partner, uh, when uh, Nicholas Leah is the actor. Um, yes. It's, uh, yeah. oh, God, the fans call him Rat Boy. Um, yeah. Rat Boy. <laughs> uh, fucking hell. Crycheck. Yes. Yeah, Crycheck. Thank you. Yeah. They Crycheck. kind of look alike. They but do. But Crycheck is the more attractive version. And... Yeah. That guy has had a way better career. Uh, that guy's in yeah. a lot well, of yeah, stuff. Well, yeah, he was in the X-Files. He was in the X-Files, and I still see him act a ton because that guy's a good yeah. actor. And yeah. also not uh, talking about being unvaccinated. So anyway, fuck this guy. I do want to talk about... Okay, we got to talk about... Well, okay, first we got to talk about Helena because I'm confused about Helena because Great. she... Number one, this has got to be from the game. On rollerblades a lot, weird. I yes. I was fully expecting her to have a fight scene while I was shocked she yeah. didn't. It's the thing yeah. I'm talking about. Everybody's established as something, and then none of them use the abilities or things that they're given. If this is a fight yeah. movie, use that. Yeah, I was shocked yeah. she wasn't on rollerblades in a fight scene. Anyway, yeah. uh the thing I was confused about her is she's introduced and she's like hosting the thing, but she's also a contestant because her father as we'll find out, was one of the founders of DOA. Yes. With yes. Eric Roberts. Uh, yes. But when she's introduced, I thought, oh, she's going to be like the the hostess of the thing. That's what I thought. Too, and then, yeah. But then she's also, when they when she's in the fights, I'm like, wait, what? And this is Sarah They're Carter. They're like, to celebrate her 21st birthday, she's going to be in the competition. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, Nepo baby, let's go. So this <laughs> is, this is, uh, this is Sarah Carter, an actress who I like. She's on, um, uh, she was on the show Falling Skies, which I was a big fan of. Uh, mm. And she was on Undeclared before this, the mm. Judd Apatow show. Uh, she was on Smallville. I mean, she's a TV actor. She's in a lot of stuff. I like her for the oh, most part. Oh, she in uh, Nexium? <laughs> uh, no, I think she managed to escape the Nexium thing. But yeah, oh, boy, they came her. for that Smallville cast. They, came they for- really did. They yeah. really came for that Smallville cast. Um, but. I, I I don't know. She's I don't think she's good or bad in this movie. Her character is pretty I mean, bland. What it's, is her character? Her character a, just there's nothing. There's, there's nothing there. There's nothing. No, she's yeah. the blandest of the like main female fighters. In the At movie. least if yeah. she fought with rollerblades, there that would have be been a, a memorable thing. Yeah. yeah, because she's she's the character that like in some ways she's kind of the main character because so much of the plot hinges on her and yet she's also very forgettable the only reason who i probably is the main character well that's I think a good the main character is supposed to be kasumi yes i do think it's supposed to be kasumi and then it's supposed to be this weird like foursome friendship of tina helena christy and kasumi but right. they kind of become friends for no reason like for no reason yeah, yeah. that's Literally. what i got where just I'm for like, convenience about yeah. halfway through the movie when they were like hanging out i'm going why are you guys friends you guys are gonna have to fight at some point. It's why like when it's like when you have other? a D and D party and it's it's the first session and it's like, why are we all together? It's like we don't have time to unpack all that. We're we're on, well, and we're actually, gonna go fight some goblins. Let's actually, go. Actually, I would be more okay if they if 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 like that they just already knew each other. Then I would at least go like, oh well, sense. it doesn't matter. But yeah. here it's like they come together, and that's another thing too that the fight isn't a fight to the death. Which no. is lame. So why is it called dead or alive? Well, that's Nobody a good question. Nobody dies. Or I mean, I guess people can die. You can but you're die. you're not supposed to. Also, when they like schedule fights, people are super chill. They'll be like, yeah, oh my God, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Forbidden Square. I know, <laughs> like, it is yay. like. And I'm like, no, fucking fight right now. Get it over with. <laughs> it's... Damn, it's only 86 minutes, baby. <laughs> well, I will say they do pack a lot of fights. There's a lot of fighting. There's not yes. a lot of good fighting in this movie. No. But there is a no, lot no, of no, fighting. No. 
Um, Because once we're on the island or whatever, I do like that their thing on the plane is everybody's on the plane and they go, "Uh, yeah, we're actually not going to land. You got to jump out of the plane right now. Yeah. So it it becomes Fortnite. uh, um, So, yeah. Or the Condemned, Uh, of course, where they were throwing people out of helicopters. Oh, that's true. We we can't forget about the Condemned as much uh, as we would like to. I I have, until you just said the title, I had forgotten about that movie completely. I was a better person because of it. Hey, man, this is Stone Cold Steve Austin. How come I didn't get an audition for the Dead or Alive movie? Now, hold Um, on. Now, I should probably be in this movie with all these sexy ladies. Yeah, where's where's Hulk Hogan? Yeah, Yeah, we got to learn about where I I learned how to fight. I was Santa once. Yeah, come on. I remember when I was Santa. Everybody loved that. Um... (laughs) Yeah, I'm already. We, you know what? Listen, we could just do. I'm looking at all this. We could just do fighting movies for the next video game month. Really, we could. I'm yeah. not sure we should, I mean, but I'm just looking at like because we also almost talked about Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li as well. So, mm-hmm. um, which is also a turd. Yeah. Why well, they're all? I mean, they're, by that I mean there are no bad video games. Right, movies. because let, we're gonna keep Ooh, up this bit. Like... We're gonna keep up this <laughs> bit this... and never stop. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, is this an ongoing bit you have? It's an for ongoing... the whole month. Okay. Uh, the ongoing Thanks. bit is that these are all classics <laughs> and they've never made uh-huh. a bad video game. Uh, yeah, we actually watched and this I've on played, Turner Classic I've, Movies, and I've yeah. played uh, every <laughs> single one of these video yeah, games. Yeah, we're. Yeah. I've totally heard of all of these. Yes. Video yeah. This is one of the most beloved video game franchises. We're all super familiar with it. Yeah, uh, this is, there's Mario, then there's Dead or Alive, and then there's Leisure Suit Larry, I think is the, the <laughs> hierarchy of uh, video games. Yeah, it's a... What about Earthworm Jim, Michael? Yeah, it's like lower on the list. Wow. Yeah. All right, damn. Uh, yeah. when are we well, there's, get... no, there's no busty ladies in it. Well, they're worms! What do you want? Well, yeah. They can only get so busty! <laughs> uh, yeah. So, all right. So, we, we, we here we go. We get the... We get... Not only do we have to jump out of a plane, we then have to do this insane jump up this like bamboo structure. Of yeah, no, oh God, God. This, they could have just cut this out. This, I think. I, I mean, this down. was their attempt to bond the three together, but girl, no one needed. I, that. I wrote yeah. down climbing. Now it's video game. <laughs> That, it does feel now like, it's this uncharted baby yeah. what's up well it does kind of feel like that once again that video game structure where it's like what's uh-huh. the next sort of action set piece we need let's do yeah. this now now this yes. will take us to eric roberts who's playing yes. what's his character's name who cares donovan. donovan oh you're right he's playing donovan I was close. and <laughs> his pervy nerd sidekick uh, weatherby. weatherby now I'm wallaby a, what yeah weatherby wallaby oh wasn't that I... a great joke Poor right. Steve Howie, who also is a guy who I like. He's a lot of stuff. stuff. He's a good actor. He's been in Shameless. Boy, they really make um, him look he's been in, awful. I've, I mean, I when I saw that he was in this and I saw he was playing the nerd guy, I was like, that is not usually who he is cast as. Did you guys yeah, see? Yeah, uh, very did, clearly a handsome man. Did you guys see Day Shift, the vampire movie with no, Jamie no. Fox? He's in that, and he and Scott Adkins play brothers in that who kick Bob ass. Daddy? That movie. I love was, Boss Daddy. We do need to watch that. That yeah. movie is awesome. But he, they play badass martial arts vampire killing brothers, and he's awesome in it. This guy, I think of as being like an action guy in a lot of stuff. So that's the thing that's weird about this to me uh, that he's playing this now. Uh, he was not the original casting choice for this, and I. This is my favorite thing from this is uh, Milo Ventimiglia. Yeah. I saw that was cast Which as Weatherby. Another who also very handsome, hot. Man. yeah, very. Handsome. But oh man, when he was in Gilmore Girls, let me tell you, oh, I was Jess and Rory all the fucking. That might have been him at his attractive peak. He was very good in Heroes, but like he was hot in Heroes. I mean, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah he's still hot, man. He's, he's still, still very hot. attractive. I'm sorry, he's like, hot on This Is Us, right? Like, I will, I, mean, yeah. I will not take any slander of this man. He is hot. No, yeah. and I, I've, I've always really liked my Levin. Intimately. He's a good actor, and I love that he dropped out of the project because he says he didn't like the way the character was being developed, and oh. I can't blame him that yeah. oh. <laughs> he was interested there... in this and then read the script and went, yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, hmm. weird. Smart. This weird. would be bad for my career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So this is the part I would, uh, you and this I is, would This play, is, John. yes, this is the, uh, well, because we that's the thing. The why obligatory. are they casting these hot leading men? It should be guys that look like us that playing yeah. this part. That This is yeah. a total nerd guy role. 
Yeah. Uh, Did you love the exciting hacking scenes that happened oh, later in the Oh, such film? thrilling so hacking thrilling, moments. Yeah. I know, right? They're like, we saw Swordfish. Let's make this really good. <laughs> swordfish. <laughs> By the way. My favorite is when he gets the little keyboard keys stuck to his forehead. Yeah. yeah. It becomes Hilarious. a full cartoon at that, that point. That was very fun. Yeah. Hilarious. I will say, my love I just wanted to see what, I, I thought this was the case. Uh, instead of doing this movie, he plays Sylvester Stallone's son in Rocky Balboa. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. do know that he was in that. That was the only Rocky movie that I was like, oh, maybe I should watch that one. But then I heard it was really bad. But I was like, but he's still really hot. Actually, I, don't I like any that the other one. Rockies, right? Um, it's just a guy and he fights. Uh, yeah. But I'm saying that was a yeah. much better career choice, I think, for him to do uh, that. Yes. And, yes, he, and then he, he shows up in uh, Creed 2 as well as that same character. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, oh, cool. yeah. So, uh, yeah, as I write, pervy nerd. And we get this scene where they have to scan everyone and then put nanobots into them. But it's mainly just every time Steve Howey's character of Weatherby was on screen, I just started going. Because all of his dialogue minus will be that. And the movie is always just like. But he's really pretty girl. I don't know how to talk to girls. I know. I early know 2000s that. representation of that's what actually, a nice guy that's is. That's actually my to be impression like. of what Michael sounds like. <laughs> my name is Michael. Well, yeah. I but I also thought like, oh no, don't one. don't have him end up with the girl because he's just kind of a stalker pervy guy. Exactly. Of course, of course it's they just do. reinforcing bad behavior. Once everyone. again, it's another thing where it's like, why does she like him? I have There's no, no idea. Reason. There's n- no reason why she would. Well, because he is actually a good-looking dude. Yeah, and they tr- just, they boy they try they really they like mat the hair down. They put the glasses. The they There's gave him greasy. really greasy hair. Yeah, yeah, they really try to make this guy not handsome. Michael was like, "Why is his hair so greasy?" And I just went, "Eh, nerds don't shower." <laughs> that's that's really what they're <laughs> what they're going for, right? Yeah. I like, mean, that's that's you know the stereotype they're yeah they're, they're like, really oh, they're all just playing their <laughs> video games or looking <laughs> at their computer but yeah Ooh. and also i don't i mean uh, once again there's all these beautiful women i don't know they don't do a good job of explaining why he's so fixated on helena specifically specifically yeah I don't yeah know. uh and then yeah when we she get got this... donk <laughs> Well, I mean, but that was, I mean, she's gorgeous. They're all gorgeous, though. I just think it's so interesting that they don't really go, once again, because no character is defined, I have no idea why anyone has any reaction to any other character in the movie. Now, basically. they did cut the scene that explains that. So he used to call himself the garbage man because he's really into that dump truck. <laughs> One of my favorite par- parks and rec lines from the gross sewage Joe when uh, <laughs> Leslie Nob asks, Why do you even like me? He goes, Because you got a killer dumpster. <laughs> so I was like, what a horrible thing to say. Uh, Terrible thing. I love Sewage Joe on that. Also, show. not true. What? Her butt is not that. It's not. It's not. Oh, in this movie? No. Leslie, no. Leslie, no. I don't know. I don't. I don't I, really know that I she wasn't ever... staring at uh, Amy Poehler's butt when uh, watching that show. She's also always in like pants. I don't know that there's anything that really like. Pant- you know, depending on the tightness of the pantsuit, if you got a good donk, it's it'll true. show. It's true. Let me but tell you. I, I don't know that anything on that show was ever designed to uh, really indicate that. There so. wasn't just no. shots specifically highlighting the female characters. Believe it or not, no. unlike, unlike this movie, unlike this movie, unlike I have I have a clear image of everyone's you know, butt in I'm, this movie. I'm starting to realize I have some critiques of Parks and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe yeah. it's not as good as I remember. <laughs> you know what? I just not know. It. Um, I do love that Leslie's obsessed with uh, with Ben's butt for a man who yeah. I think similar, has no butt. Has no butt. Yeah, I, uh, a similar affliction that Mr. Scott and I share is a lack of ass. Um, mm. There's just there's it's just flat. Yeah, straight down. Which is funny because I relate to Leslie note because I always talk about Michael's butt. Mm. Yes, this I think people can go back and listen to previous episodes of the show and hear that. Um, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then, uh, or just like in the background of other recordings, you know. I don't talk about. I'm not randomly talking about your butt in I'm the play, background I'm of anything. Matt you hear Com. me randomly cackling. At I, something. I'm playing Matt Com. Do, do I just hear yeah. no. Uh, <laughs> so just shout about your butt randomly. Yeah. We, I lo- the, here's an example of of, of uh, here's a, something that'll tell you a movie's bad. When a training montage just immediately segues into a fighting montage, I'm like, you just had a montage into another montage. Yes, that's really because yeah. we have them all. It's a pre-montage. We have montage. them all doing their training. They love, and it's very impressive that she can do it. They love the upside down, uh, 
like curls that uh mm-hmm. you know or Jean whatever Percy ab crunches saying. that she's doing yeah. yeah yeah they love that they show that a few times sure um, I but mean, it's impressive. She should be on Ninja like, Warrior, honestly. No, like I said, I'm just watching the movie, going like, "Man, she really trained for this." Yeah, <laughs> more than I'm going reason. like, oh, I'm not, I'm not being like Weatherby and going, "Oh, blah, blah, blah. no, blah, you're blah, just blah. like, wow, that's impressive." Yeah, yeah. It's like, it yeah, I can't do that. It's the, <laughs> it's the it's the same thing of me watching Arrow when he's doing the salmon ladder thing. I'm just going like, "God damn, he's really doing that." Um, yeah. but uh, well, hard enough time getting off the couch. I can't I do it. <laughs> Upside down push. Or it's the sa- it's the, consider- the constant realization. No, I prefer of- up to upside down push ups. <laughs> I think so that's I that's what I'm really good at. Raising the roof, just- baby. Yeah, that's, not, that's, that's, the way- that's the upside down push up, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess it's that's what that, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, do we want to talk about the acupuncture fight scene? Oh, we we need which, to talk about which one? It. Well, I don't, the flashback uh, the one. First Oh, is there a flashback? That, well, that sets With it up. With the brother. Because the, oh, Kasumi has right. this flashback to her brother, saving okay. her from, I don't know, another ninja clan that kidnapped just her. a random... Guess. They seemed like they were just, like, poor people, honestly. <laughs> or, like, bandits. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Once again, it's just literally everything is ill-defined in this movie. Um, but, yeah, and, and yeah. Yeah, because they live in feudal Japan, whereas I, everybody lives in the, I in the could, in It makes no day. sense to me that, yeah, that scene where I thought, is this like, when the movie started there, I did think, is this going to be like the ancient origins of the dead or alive no. thing? Oh, no, this is happening now. No, no. In, in the early 2000s, Japan was still going through its feudal stage. I know, it is. Uh, it's, it's a very... Uh, uh, offensive idea of like, well, that's what it's like in those foreign countries. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's still the the far past over there. Yeah, um, or they think <laughs> the just the idea that there's somebody thinking there are like castles on a mountain in Japan where this stuff is going on. Right. Yeah. The rest of Japan is totally like modern. Right. It's, it's just this one yeah. castle that nobody's been able to get to, even though there's planes. I mean, the in castles in Japan are pretty fucking dope. I mean, they are. But yeah, but there's not. Know. But there's not people still there doing like. Yeah, there's not. There's not weird, not shinobi I, clans, I, I, but isolated also shin- societies. Yeah, I was confused yeah, I yeah where it's like, no, well, no. we've just decided to live like feudal Japan still. It's like I don't think like that's the like... Amish. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The, 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 these are the Japanese equivalent. The, of the Japanese Amish. Amish. <laughs> Okay. Okay. But All yes, right. this this is making more apparently sense. Apparently, no, Kasumi's not. family uh, uses so acupuncture she's just doing needles. A Rumspringa, right. <laughs> that's <laughs> what. That's why they don't want her to go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there is something about. Uh, so anyway, her family's weapon of choice are acupuncture needles. Yes. What is that weapon about? of choice? But also, they do. They actually do acupuncture as like a healing. Yes, because well. she does do acupuncture for it is, Tina. Yeah, it is both a healing and a weapon, right? Like, mm, mm. just know, like the human body. Exactly. Wait. wait, wait. What? <laughs> yeah, because so I guess the idea is that they're hitting certain <laughs> nerves and muscles to paralyze people or something sure. like that. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, uh, I we all know about the chi blockers from Last Airbender, you know. <laughs> And they also, well, the needles the... float in the air for some reason, just wait for you to pluck them. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that was my question. That's yeah. the thing I keep, the, my frustration about this movie is like, is this a fantasy movie? I can't, because <laughs> it seems like there's magic sometimes, but not other times. Uh, yeah. And that's the thing I, that I just think they don't understand me. physics. It's just Japanese mysticism. You well, know? that is kind of the thing about it that is also kind of the shitty thing about it too, where it's like, you know, those Japanese people who are kind of magic, you are like, mm-hmm. no, God. No. They're just really yeah. good at other stuff. Yeah, that's the thing where it's like I, you either need to be – pick a lane. You either need to be grounded fighting or go full Mortal Kombat, and this movie wants to have both ways, and it kind of mm-hmm. pisses me off. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah, so we, we, we get all that flashback. He saved her, but then he supposedly died as part of DOA, and this is mm-hmm. when she gets attacked. Is this the bamboo forest fight, I think? Who knows? Or, I, no, or this, I can't or remember this the, the order mirror? of anything in this. This movie. is what I don't understand. I think we yeah, talked about this a little no, bit. Like natural flow. No, there's no, no plot everything, to this. Everything movie. just randomly happens, and <laughs> and purple haired chick shows up so randomly, and you're just like, girl, go away. And, and as we talked about, if, if the whole idea is, hey, we don't want you to leave because you might die in this DOA tournament. Why is me going and killing you then? <laughs> That's not the, no. They're saying if you leave, you're betraying us, and if you leave, we have to kill you. Yeah, they don't give a fuck about the DOA thing at all. Well, that's just stupid. 
Yeah. It is. Well, yeah. also because her brother left to do the DOA thing. And the purple hair chicks was like, well, we fucking, so I can't kill him for yeah. leaving. Yeah. But I can kill his sister. And I'm like, that's wild. <laughs> like, if, if, if this were the situation and, like, Michael mm. went to the DOA thing that and we're part of the realistic. same clan and he <laughs> didn't come back and then the next year comes around and his sister wants to go and I'm like, well, I can't let you go, Kelsey. I have to kill you now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I've, sorry. Make it makes sense. It's Wait, the only, it's the only save way. It for, save it for my biography, okay? okay. <laughs> or Kyle, you know, it could be either of them. I, either one. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, just... I, I think all the Lisman siblings would do real well in DOA. I uh, think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh man, this woman who plays the the pearl haired chick is in so many video game movies. It's crazy. Yes, yes. She's in I... this. Uh, she's in several Blood Rain movies. She's in Alone Yeesh. in the Dark too. Uh, hey, yeah, man. You as as I said, stay tuned over on my Monsters podcast for the Blood Rain movies. Blah. We gotta yeah. watch those. Jesus Christ! Uh, she's in like in the name of the movie? vampire, oh, vampire, blood sense. rain. Yeah, isn't it, mm, is it Nazi related? I believe. I believe so, there's. Well, some the third of... one's called Third Reich, I think. Oh well, then yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I thought that was the video game franchise where you just go around killing Nazis, or am I thinking of it? You one? might be thinking of Wolfenstein. I, That's Wolfenstein, what I'm thinking of. Yeah, Wolfenstein, Blood Rain. They sound exactly the well, same. Well, they're all oh. kind of in the same. Yeah, I, I mean, I do think of that. Uh, anyway, she's also in uh, one of the Dungeon Siege movies. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. she's in a lot of that stuff. As it says on her IMDb, uh, trademark often plays assassins or female heroes. Okay. And she was ranked number 53 in Maxim's 100 Sexiest Women of 2003. What an accomplishment. Great. Yeah. She's, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, I, she made no impression on me in this movie. Nope. Uh, I like the color of her wig. That's it's a good I, purple. I, I, I did it's like, the I, yeah. color of the purple I'm wearing right now. So I, liked, I liked all the purple in this movie. I agree. I like the yeah. purple swords and the purple armor and all that stuff. That's fine. I got no issues with the color in this movie. I do have some problems with Brian White's green little tuft of hair goatee? and goatee. And tuft, oh. yeah. Yeah, that's bad. Also, that was bad. Uh, why, why they got to do him dirty like that? I know. Another good-looking guy who's just yeah. done terribly. He's hot. Yeah. He's definitely hot. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is twice now we've seen this poor guy done dirty by movies. Uh, Because he's terrible in 12 rounds, too. Actually, we said he's not. He's never terrible. He does what's asked of him. It's just they always ask him to do stupid stuff. Um, yep. Can we talk about the scene where he basically tries to sexually assault Jamie Presley? Mm, yeah it let's let's get into that that it, sounds he's coming great. on hard i was yeah. waiting for our friend ice t from svu to show up and go hold up now hold up you're under arrest uh yeah now this is not consent yeah <laughs> handling new york's most delicate cases uh but, yeah, he's basically being a sex pest for the entirety of this movie. Yeah, it is. It, it, and, and yeah, this whole idea about, once again, he's a handsome guy who's like desperate and lame and awful. Uh, yes. And then, yes, he also is very naked. Yes. But it's supposed to be like uh, embarrassing, except for once again, dude's jacked. He's yeah. He's ripped. <laughs> yeah. He should be proud. He should be walking around without... That, underwear proud well that's of, of i mean it, it is i i was if, if i was if i had that kind of build i'd i wouldn't be like uh oh no i've been exposed like uh <laughs> it's just like what i don't know yeah check out my cum gutters yeah <laughs> that was that was also part. uh one of the cut lines from the r rated yeah, version of what a movie, shame. Was check out yeah. my cum gutters that was the uh, that was the line that michael submitted in yeah, yeah. that was yeah, yeah. I'm, you did a rewrite on this and that was the line you just you you changed yeah. nothing else except that you added that when line. i was a, a freshman or i guess a sophomore in high school i did mail it in um, yeah so yeah that's uh, my first i hear you guys are making it. a dead or alive movie i have a line suggestion <laughs> i Some notes. i'm a big fan um, uh, but yes, he does uh, scamper off then, having been embarrassed, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I guess. And then I don't actually understand how Holly Valance and Jamie Presley end up in bed together. Because she's kind of getting... I didn't write down no, much. No, because of, they... So, because uh, it was Kasumi's fight, right? Yeah. So they totally fucked up the room that she was staying yeah, in. Yeah, she got oh. thrown through a wall or something. So That's she right. was like, yo, what up, girl? That's right. That's right. Uh 
and uh and yeah we get that whole hilariously awkward bit of boy any times when he tries to be funny it's a disaster yep um it's true so uh, we get all that. The, the thing that the the Max, the awful, unattractive, mm-hmm. not charming guy, Anytime and Christy, mm-hmm. they're trying to also rob the dead or alive. Apparently, because they are thieves. I yeah. guess. And apparently, there's a hundred million dollars, and they're like, "Dope." Who cares about the ten? I know. I don't really understand when it. This is all. There's there's, so, there's there's all these characters with like different machinations, but they mm-hmm. never do a good job of actually making any of it connect to anything or like. Because it is an eighty six minute film, <laughs> so there's only so much time to yeah include all of these subplots and flesh them out. I mean, if it was maybe a show like an anime or something, it yeah, might it work does. A it better. does kind of feel this would like... definitely work as an anime. Yeah, I, yeah, I think. But I, think... I mean, animes already have tournaments, like whole seasons that are tournaments. Exactly. It is. God, they go on forever. It yeah. is like watching an eighty-six minute cut of a full anime season, though, or something like yes. that, right? Where you're going yes. like, I, I, and I got more questions about who this is and what their deal is. Right, um, exactly. Because, yeah, I do think that the, my whole note on this movie is the whole movie, visually, acting-wise, and storytelling, it just needs to calm down. Yeah. Like, it's yes. just, it's so, uh, yeah. It, so, they're also trying to rob the place. None of their scenes mm-hmm. are good. No. Um, the Jane Presley does have to fight her father, which she does on a bamboo raft. That does happen, yeah. Which is a, not a bad idea for a scene, but it's not good again because death is not it really robs the movie of stakes yes so it's like mortal Kombat. i would not say like the first mortal Kombat movie is not a great film but there are at least stakes because (laughs) it's mortal Kombat. also they created new rules for the for the fight between the daughter and the dad they were like whoever falls into the water first loses instead of a ko that's true so there's not like there's nobody so they kind of refereeing. Are like, they're making these their own rules about it because yeah. they're obviously not going to kill each other. Okay, so this is really just bad um, uh, tournament design. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, like yeah. they're not like Eric Roberts is dropping the ball here. So, but all like, because Eric Roberts is just wanting to steal people's fighting abilities, not because yes, that's also that then uh, unclear. And that so was, then none of it matters yeah. because yeah. that was apparently what Sarah Carter's father found out about and tried to shut down so then he killed her father i guess part of the plot but but there's been multiple years of dead or alive tournaments yeah yes is this the first one where eric roberts tried to download people's fighting styles well he was using weatherby's technology so i think he weatherby had developed this technology to this point and excuse me sir (laughs) I'm talking with my hands. I know you don't like that, but you need to. Sorry, our cat is. uh, uh, He's very sassy. Yeah, he wants to be a part of this. uh... My cat has Uh, given up on me paying attention to him and has gone to sleep. I wonder what that's like. Sir? He tries for a while and then he's like, I guess he's not going to. He'll get back to me when he wants. Um, But so, yeah, no, uh, I don't know. He it's weird. So he because he captured Kasumi's brother. But yes. in the end, he just says it's so he can test his fighting ability against a great fighter. Because, yes, because theoretically, Kasumi's brother is the greatest fighter in the world. Like there is yeah. a title and he has it apparently. Yeah. Which I love. I love that the confrontation, the person who fights Eric Roberts is a character who has not been in the rest of the film. Right. Like that's really He's good. He's only been spoken of. Yeah. And yeah. seen it yeah. briefly in a flashback. Like, yeah. Really good. Uh, screenwriting there great job really good oh stuff yeah here. and then they shaved his head yeah and he so was sad he was less attractive he was less attractive i mean he's still good looking but with the long hair nice uh Hi. but yeah so so we get oh, let's see is there anything else that i really need to we get whatever bum, bum, bum. i'm just going through because i'm like there's just not much to this movie flower oh no, yeah no. the random sword fight that breaks out all of a sudden there's a huge katana fight Yes. Oh, right on it the turn, steps. It turns yeah. into Kill Bill for like one scene. Yeah, with yeah. Helena. I love how that like... girl's like, don't worry, I've got my little purple sequence thing around my arm. I'm ready to fight. That's, it's like, that's what is that got to be from the game, right? Because I did that really distracted me, that purple sequin, like wrist guard or whatever she has, like <laughs> wristband. Because um, mm-hmm. I don't know, are these the characters from the game? I'm, these must be, right? Yes, yeah. they are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. 
Um, it's not the double dragon thing where they just randomly started calling characters other stuff. Different names, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, they did not come up with names like Tina, Christy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the other characters' names. Kasumi, a runaway female ninja of the Mugen Tenshin Ninja Clan. And the series... So apparently, Kasumi is the main protagonist of the games. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so that so that that I guess that, yeah. All right, so that would answer that. Um and then this this apparently is the plot of Dead or Alive 3 is what this is borrowing. That introduces sure. mad scientist Victor Donovan who's trying to produce the ultimate fighter. <laughs> Sounds like fighting games. Yeah. Well, that's about where'd what you, I expected. Where'd you learn to fight like that? From fighting. From fighting. <laughs> From fighting. Favorite line. From, it's my favorite line. From yeah. It's still one of the greatest lines ever spoken in film. Uh, so fucking funny. And I guess Donovan becomes the villain then for all the games. He's like the main sure. thing. And then there's an evil organization called Mist. I'm just sort of scanning this now as I look at this. Sure. Uh, also the name of a different game. Yeah, that is. Yeah, a very different game. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, just as much nudity though. Oh, oddly enough so much. same amount of volleyball too That's yeah true. oh yeah. I, my note does we do need to talk about that volleyball scene because i did just write down the note finally some volleyball i was waiting <laughs> for it because it is what i think of with the dead or alive franchise yes. more than as a fighting yeah. game i think of it as a volleyball game and it it's it further adds to this weird tone about the stakes though right where it's like mm. everybody's in this big fight but then it's like hey everybody let's go play some volleyball yeah, it'll yeah. be distracting because that's what it is. It's like a distraction, right? And then uh, yeah. poor Brian White, because he's the black guy in the movie, has to get on a mic and go, yo, 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 everybody, I'm the DJ now. Oh, God, I, I cringed so hard. Oh, when, boy, when this poor guy, did man. That. This oh, poor. God. Oh, yeah, you wrote God. a note. Partry. Oh, no, no, not, that's the party. Oh, oh, well, I don't there's know. A, oh, right, because there's also the dance party. There's the dance party. There is the later. dance party. Yeah, that's uh, what I mean. Where it's just sort of like nobody seems to be taking this exclusive ultimate fight very seriously. That's the thing it's that gets like me. Almost like the filmmakers weren't taking this movie very seriously. That's the thing that gets me <gasps> about this. Yeah, where you just go like, yeah, what are you, <laughs> what are you doing, man? Like, uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's oh god, yeah, that's the thing. So yeah, so we get a big volleyball scene with a lot of terrible CGI volleyballs. Yes. Horrible yes. CGI volleyballs. Yes. Yeah. And then as most volleyball games end with a shuriken getting thrown into the volleyball. I'm pretty sure that's how the, traditionally they end. That's yeah. how it always ended in when I played volleyball in my gym class. In high yeah, school. that was yeah. it. It's like, yeah. all right, game's over. Uh, I was always on shuriken duty, which is... Um... Not... The duty you should the amount of people that Michael sent to the hospital. I mean, was, it's, it's it was it's the, for the love of the game, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing is, actually, had you known Michael in high school, uh, him throwing shurikens around would not have been unusual. Oh, I'm a, I'm aware. Yeah, you're aware of the the his ninja I'm, years. I, there are there are swords in our closet. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm aware of the weeb. They are that is next to me right now. They are in our storage. Oh, that they're in the storage yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You don't need those. You don't need those on hand at your fingertips. There, exactly. No, uh, no, no. I'm less, less wanted by various ninja clans these days. That's so. yes, that's right. Yeah. Sure, the big knife is also in storage, huh? Oh, that's true. We should have that by the bed. <laughs> what is just in case? What is King of Fighters? That is another fighting. Well, there's uh, a movie of that I'm discovering. So yeah, it's another fighting game. Yeah, like I said, there's a lot of fighting game movies. I'm not realizing. It's there's crazy. a lot. I mean, it makes sense, and there's they're all probably tournaments. And... There's multiple Tekken movies. I did not realize. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, interesting. When are they going to make a Soul Calibur game movie? That's what I meant. <laughs> there are plenty of Soul Calibur games. Uh, uh yeah, I'm surprised they haven't. <laughs> they don't want it. They don't want to cast Faldo. <laughs> that's why. Um, I mean, I'm sure, at, especially now, video game movies are actually starting to turn profit. So I think everything's up for adaptation at this point because everybody sees that as the next comic book sort of thing. The only difference there being it's tougher. Some some yes, things. Like the is, the fact that you have something like want, The Last of Us being successful that makes sense, right? I want the Soul Caliber cinematic universe. Yeah, there you go. 
Um, yeah. So or we... Darth Vader and Yoda show up because they were in Soul Calibur Four. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the insanity of the the fight between uh, Christy and Helena, where noticing the tattoo on her neck tells her where. Oh. The vault oh my God. is the 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 puzzles solving and the password all that stuff was so stupid. <laughs> it was it was it was it felt insulting to me the audience. Yes. Also the fact doing. that she was able to figure it out and mediocre dumbass was like, "Oh no, it's it's this tattoo on her lower back." And she's like, "She's got another tattoo." And the, idiot. And, yeah, and also I love the whole attempt to do like a Sherlockian thing where she's like remembering the fight and drawing the tattoo. It's like, wait a minute. I got it. Mm, uh, and then yeah, she looks, she, and then she's like, these numbers aren't wait, let me look in the mirror. And mm. Oh, that's the combination to the safe that's in the Buddha okay, head. Here's my question. If she is the key to opening the safe. Yeah. And like, they put so they like so she's like okay let me get that tattooed on me let me get it tattooed on the back of my neck yeah where everyone can see it where i can totally see but, it but well, she has a lot of hair but the big move put the number backwards then they yeah. won't know well yeah so it's him. <laughs> so, well because that when she looks at it in the mirror it'll be facing the right way i guess that's true mm -hmm. yeah but still yeah so so they can never change the password no otherwise <laughs> she's gonna have to get a new fucking tattoo <laughs> okay guys i am not getting this tattoo done again you need to pick a yeah. code you need to fucking pick it. one and let's can we keep it secure this time <laughs> yeah. and then they're like stop getting it tattooed on your body yeah i have to it's, how else will a, i it's remember in my contract it. i have a great to. reveal later dad on. said how else will i remember it i don't I'm, mm -hmm. dad you tell me the so. next one, she'll get it tattooed on her. She'll shave her head, get it tattooed on her skull. And there you go. Do, yeah, like, do like a little look. like fryer look where you get just like this part of your Ooh, head. Ooh, that's interesting. The top, the there it is. I, now we're talking. I think she could pull that off. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. But <laughs> yeah, that, that the, this whole scene is stupid and all of this stuff. Who cares uh -huh. about any of this? Yeah, and it's, I believe, supposed to be raining and they're yes. fighting where are they fighting on a beach on a beach yeah it, but they're like in water yeah well they're, they're it, on like the it's shore they're next of a to beach. water yeah they're on like there's the... just so much rain there's a big puddle okay, okay. yeah so they're fighting in a big puddle it's, they are fighting in a big puddle it's, it's, we love to see it i will say it is one of the only times when i went this doesn't look good but i like halfway applaud the effort to try to make this seem interesting with the rain e yeah you know where it's like okay this is attempting to do but once again it's also a it's thing where it's like you've yeah. seen other better fights in the rain in movies. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And also it's clearly also, not raining. Like it's clear that this is all fake rain because yes. it's bright and sunny everywhere else. I'm also confused because this dude that she's for some reason teamed up with has already betrayed her. Yes. And then she actually gets the necessary information. She gets the code and the location of the money. Why are you even telling him any of this? I would just be like, "Dope, I'm gonna go get this hundred million myself." Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to conveniently way, make means. sure that this motherfucker gets killed in one of the fights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he is technically a con contestant. Which again, I don't know how he even got invited because well, he's not a fighter. I don't think does he. And does then he just ever fight conveniently anyone? have him die. He does take the hundred million. Go buy an island right. and fucking be in bikinis all day and invite all the ladies. Come on. He does have a fight scene in the movie. And it's sad. He just kicks his shoes off and both yes! shoes hit the person in the head. That's what and it then was. The thing falls off. Well, it on hits him. him in the balls and then the head and then a big metal vase falls off. That's on right. Yeah. That's right. I and did then there's write about cartoon the... sound effects. There there's... are actually cartoon sound effects. There are. And there's also there cartoon are. sound effects uh, in the fight in the ring with Jamie Presley and Brian White where she. Yes. Number one, there's a shotgun kick. Did you catch this? There is a shotgun kick. She... There's also a man who reloads his fists like Henry Cavill. <laughs> Except not nearly as cool as Henry Cavill. With the... <laughs> well, I don't know, John. I'm, it, I am I was a big fan of that sequence, uh, but now I'm realizing Henry Cavill's a thief. Yeah. He's a no good, <laughs> talentless thief. Yeah. thief. You're right. Uh, Countless that, ugly feet. That yeah. fight scene in Mission Impossible's got nothing on this movie. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But uh, uh, yeah. Jamie Presley does a kick where her leg goes up and it's a, and then when she kicks it, it goes. Yeah. 
Uh, I did not but, catch that. But there's but... also one where she punches okay. Brian White, and you actually hear the Tweeting Birds cartoon sound like. Yep. I do remember that because yep. I was like, okay, this is tweet, reminding tweet, me tweet, of tweet. the Cynthia Rothrock movie with the cartoonish fighting. Oh my the, god! In the back of the convenience store, which yeah. I loved. Uh, yeah, uh, that I can't that in no way fit the tone of that otherwise dark film. <laughs> yeah, because so, that, yeah. that was the only fight scene that had cartoon sound effects. Everything else was and that, yeah. Very and the rest dark. of the movie was about like how her sister had been killed in front of her and stuff, and like. Uh, that movie's really weird. Um, so is this movie. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's get let's just get to the end of the movie here, where Eric Roberts yes. has fired up his sci-fi fighting machine. Uh huh. Puts on his sunglasses that yes help him predict. It shows him basically a video of what the fight will look like. Yes, is what it's shown. I Which believe, is yes. kind of yes. funny to think about him sitting there watching that, and everybody's just standing there as he's like he's watching. <laughs> See, again, if we there. filmed this movie, we would show him watching it in its entirety, and people just waiting around and for going him like, to be done. "What? What? What's he what doing? Are you doing? Yeah, what's he doing? What's he doing? Is he, yeah, can he see? Is he all right? That's a <laughs> wow, those are stupid sunglasses. Huh. I know, and I love it. takes It takes him so long to knock the stupid fucking sunglasses off of him. I know it's one of those things we go like, uh, that seems like that's the way you defeat him, you guys. I don't know. Uh, I'd be like, I'm not screw any fighting form I know. I'm just gonna walk up and snatch him off his fucking face and be, and break him and be like, okay, now what? Yeah, I, I'm gonna rip off your fucking rat tail, you bitch. What? Well, let's set aside the fact that he's uh he has special sunglasses that help him win fights. Mm-hmm. If 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 I yes am in a fighting tournament with somebody wearing sunglasses, the first thing I'm doing is punching those sunglasses and breaking them. Agree, right? Yeah, like then why those shards can get into their eyes, right? Yeah, if you're stupid enough to wear sunglasses to a martial arts tournament, yeah. Oh, it's pretty dark where they're fighting. That's true, actually. And those, yeah. are, those are pretty dark sunglasses. They, yeah, they are. Yeah, hmm, interesting. Yeah, Too that sad. is. Uh... That is that is weird. We've got a lot of theories, and then we then yeah. we get to watch Eric Roberts try to do martial arts in a movie, and we Oof. love Eric Roberts on this show, and he's a fit middle aged gentleman, but it it still looks like your dad is it's, doing a fight scene. It's embarrassing, like he, and he keeps his in costume shape. is not helping him. No, either. and the aforementioned we haven't we, we did we have mentioned the the little braided rat tail thing that clearly is just clipped into his hair, right? Oh, yes. yes. Because you don't see it in every scene. (laughs) No, it's just like, they're like, hold on, let me, uh, there we go. It magically shows up. Yeah, Yeah. like halfway through the film. Yeah, it's it's dumb. It's a dumb look for this character. Uh, And, and, yeah, and, and every scene is very, this is where you get a lot of the stuff that drives us insane about clearly like we learned these two punches then these three punches then that kick mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. uh, yeah and we're just cutting around people not knowing the choreography uh, or they're not being choreographed one of my or... biggest laughs is when weatherby hacks the machine and then it sends a cia alert <laughs> it comes up on the screen it just goes cia alerted and he's like yeah gotcha eric Got roberts with my fancy yeah. hacking Ugh, God. <laughs> I hated every moment that Weatherby was on screen. I hated. Yeah. Uh, it's, hard, be... it's hard to look into that mirror and oh, see shut yourself up. Really shut up. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, I, here's a quick, why does the island blow up? What's the reason for this? Uh, he, Eric he, Roberts. He puts it into self-destruct. Yes. Okay, he does put it into self-destruct. That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. But, uh-oh, before he hit right after he hit self destruct, uh Kasumi nails him with one of those uh oh his her brother hits him in the foot. Does the foot thing, yeah. 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 And then Kasumi hits him in the neck with the acupuncture, so he's like paralyzed there. Yeah. As everyone else jumps an insane distance that would absolutely kill them. That would kill them, yeah. Away yeah, from would. this exploding temple. They would hit the surface of the water like cement. No, you yep. lost table privileges. Uh <laughs> and uh, uh, and they dive away, of course, in a terrible, more terrible CGI as mm-hmm. Eric Roberts is engulfed by CGI flames. Mm. What a way to die. And what? then we run into our favorite pirates again. I oh, couldn't then... believe this. I was like, the fucking pirates are back? Because, yes, they're all in the water, and these pirates are back. And the joke is just that when they see Jamie Presley, they're like, oh, no! Roll credits. I did think it was going to be a roll credits when she punches the camera. Oh, I guess and it goes they did. Yeah, yeah. I thought, wow, that's the end of the movie. 
No, we need to see everybody driving away. All our couples are together. Yeah, I also was confused. Except for the brother and the purple-haired haired girl. They yeah. are not on that boat. No, I yeah, don't they, know. Yeah, they died on the island. I, I guess so. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I also was confused as to why Christy and Max were together because I thought Max had betrayed her and was a bad guy now. Yeah, you'd think. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> He's around, I guess, and she knows that she's smarter and more capable than him, so he's not really a threat, so might as well use him for something. Yeah, I guess. Uh, And then, yes, of course, Weatherby and Helena have gotten together for no reason. And they're actively fucking on the deck of this boat. (laughs) Yeah, because Jamie Presley has to go, get a room. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because they are doing the most awkward kiss. I hate these kisses in movies where, like, he go like the guy goes to lean in and the girl's like smiling and they just end up kissing your teeth. Have you yeah. ever kissed someone's teeth before? Yeah, it hurts. Uh, I haven't. You just bump teeth. I was gonna say yeah, never purposefully. I have yeah, bumped, it's always I have bumped teeth, which is never fun and kind of ruins yeah. whatever was happening there. <laughs> uh, hey, kiss me, yeah. kiss me in my skeleton teeth. I'm gonna bite yeah. uh, your lips. It also always screams to me of like, oh, these two don't really want to kiss, do they? Like, it's no. all just like, no. nah. They're just like waiting for them to cut away so that they don't actually have to touch lips. And then I thought the movie was over. And then for some reason, we get this denouement. Uh, I yeah, I don't know what this where is. Where all this of the purple ninja clan is coming at our four female leads who all hold katanas. Yes. Yeah. What is this? What I think I don't this know. is like a it's Preceded like this? What next this time up? on yeah next DOA. time on DOA because uh, it, it really is, it's very strange. Yeah. And it, and it just ends with all of them running at them and them standing there with the swords and then it goes to credits. Yeah. Wow. What yeah. the hell is this movie? This movie's really know. this movie just like there's no thought that went into this movie. It is, yeah. It um, is pure id, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. The costumes are cheap. The styling is very of the time. God, the zigzag part. The zigzag part on, <sighs> on Christy. Christy. Yeah, that was interesting. Yikes. Uh, I remember that being popular. A lot of the fashion <laughs> yes, in this yes. movie, I remember I also, being popular. I also and being the like, zigzag, there's yeah. a reason that this shouldn't come back, even though a lot yeah. of it is, and I'm upset about it. But we can't. We don't have time to unpack all of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, we didn't really enjoy this movie, but, uh, there's some other misguided souls out there who apparently think it's a good movie. So it's time once again for me to find the most misguided IMDb review. And honestly, mm. this one was hard to choose. Yeah. There's, there's a, lot, a lot, lot to pick from. Quite a few. There yeah. are quite a few, but I will go with this one simply because it it's a classic, uh, action shelf attitude, Lisman. Oh, yeah, I think I know which one you're going to This read. comes to us from IMDb user Adrian G6, who mm-hmm. titles his review, It's much more than you'd expect. Is it? <laughs> Most important it rule to viewing DOA, ignore the critics. Yep. This film is based on one of the most popular beat-em-up game franchise to date. DOA follows the annual Dead or Alive fighting tournament, where the world's best are invited and converge on an island to earn $10 million. This should Mm. all be familiar to fans of the game series, as it was to me. What makes this movie different to the games, however, is that it takes a slightly less dark path along the story. Where the games (laughs) are oftentimes serious, this film is lighthearted and fun. All of the performances are competent, and the actors do a fine job in the fight scenes. Holly Valance does well in her film debut as Christy and delivers a polished performance. Sarah Carter is bubbly and cheerful as Helena, and in my opinion, delivers the best performances in the numerous fight scenes. Nice. Devin Aoki nope. does what she needs to for Kasumi. <laughs> That's not a compliment. That is not a compliment at all. I love that. It's just like, does what is required. Says Even the- this person can't give her a Devin Aoki compliment. says the lines they wrote for her. Uh- uh-huh. In the... <laughs> In the correct order, the words are coming out in the correct I order. I followed the meaning of the word she said. Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Natasia Malte uh, as Ayane. She looks a bit odd, but performs the role adequately. <laughs> <laughs> There's some good supporting roles, such as those of Zach, Bass, Leon, and Bayman. And for fans of the games out there, you'll be happy to know that most of the characters put in some kind of appearance. I had fun looking for shots of them. But the show stealer is Jamie Presley as Tina. Despite the competition from Carter and Valance, Presley excels as the beautiful wrestler with the southern accent and killer skills. 
The music and set design is fine. <laughs> And the special effects hold true to the game series. I.e., they look like a PlayStation 2 game, probably, you know, like uh, Yes. I'm not yes, sure I'm not sure that's do. a thing where you want it to be like the games, you know? Yeah. Well, I really yeah. am glad the special effects look like <laughs> old video games. Uh mm. so uh, let's see here. Um uh my mate oh uh the special effects hold true to the game. There's even a volleyball scene. You know why. That's in parentheses. Uh, my major gripe was with Eric Roberts as Donovan. He just seemed so wrong. Really? I think that's interesting. That's his. But but it's a minor setback for about an hour and a half of dead or alive fun. This film is one of the best additions to the game to film genre. Not quite up to the level of Resident Evil, but better than a lot I've seen. It's fun, fast, plenty of action and comedy. The film is definitely worth the trip to the cinema. But it's still an entertaining ride for those of you who aren't fans of the games. Try and bring a friend who is so they can fill you in. 10 out of 10 stars. Okay. <laughs> I love the okay. idea of like, you're going to be lost if you don't bring a friend who can explain all the game shit. Yeah, the lore is very deep. So there's a lot to dig into here. <laughs> good lord. Yeah, this guy's uh, out of his mind. This guy's there, delusional. There are a few good reviews for this one. Uh, yeah. There are. Know. Well, because I mean... Uh, uh, I just feel like everybody, if they're saying anything other than like boobs, they're lying. You know, what I mean, like that's the thing. Where it's all... I mean, that was also a big theme, which is there's a lot. There's just boobs in this, but like, you know what? It's a guilt. I'm never telling anybody I enjoy this film, but yeah. I am going to give it a positive. I just review. own that. Honestly, I have more respect to yeah. own that. Uh, I will say, not really any one-liners in this movie. No, nope. surprises or... me. Or not There's really. There's only really one death. Yeah, and it's not that exciting, so I don't really think we even have any of that to talk about. Is it's time? I think it's time though. We hear from everyone's favorite Amazon.com user. Uh, yes, I was folks, wondering if br good old Brucey was gonna Bru pop appearance. in on this. He oh, is yeah. gonna pop in on this. Unfortunately, he didn't see this movie, so we'll once again I have to go to another Bruce winning review. But it's time mm -hmm. yet again for the winning opinion. Bruce winning. This is his review of... Now, listen, we know one thing about Bruce. Well, we know yeah. a few things about him. One thing we definitely we know do know about him. him. Not a sci-fi guy. Not, no. a, not a science fiction man. Which is why I was surprised when I saw recently he had watched the Jake Gyllenhaal film Source Code. Interesting. Yeah, time Interesting. travel adventure with Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, mm -hmm. Here is Bruce's thoughts on the movie. He titles his review, I don't usually love science fiction. <laughs> God, this is this is one of his greatest sentences. Last one. Mm. I am not comfortable with time travel. <laughs> <laughs> I he am not hates daylight savings time. I am not comfortable with time travel, but this is not actually time travel. I was okay, surprised right. to find this on the list of what Prime thought I would like to see. Thanks, Amazon Prime Video. This was a very comforting movie. Five <laughs> out of five stars. I'm not comfortable with time travel. <laughs> It was a comforting movie. I don't like. I don't yeah, like I, don't I don't like the idea. I don't know if you guys have seen. I don't like time zones. If you guys, I don't know if you guys have seen Source Code. It's a good movie. I have not. Uh, no. But basically, the idea is 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 he is going. Jake Gyllenhaal is going back into the memory of a guy who died in a terrorist attack. So it's kind of time. That's what he means. Where it's like it is time travel, but like essentially, yeah. yeah but there's there's uh there's something I, I like the idea that he goes. So I'm comfortable with that. That's not really time travel. Uh, I mean, that's true. As long as it's, it's not, not uh, Back to the Future, I'm fine. Yeah, he he hates Back, back to the Future. Back to right? the Future makes his skin. Well, cold. there's one thing we also know about him as we talk about. He doesn't like movies set in the cold because he hates the cold, <laughs> which I do think is always very funny. He's old. And yeah, I just, the older you get, the I just, less you like. I the just cold, hate the cold. My dad. And I love the idea though that's like even movies in the cold upset him. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. Uh, Lisman, what do you say? One last time, let's fire up and uh, the action movie title generator let's and do it. come up with a sequel to something that doesn't deserve a sequel. Uh, DOA colon. What's DOA dead or alive colon. Uh, so DOA, it's DOA colon dead or alive colon. Colon, yes. Colon. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to set this to fantasy for our generator here. Why not? Let's set it to Ooh. fantasy mode and we are going to call this. Okay. Uh, okay. DOA colon dead or alive colon source without courage. Source without courage? Source without courage. Okay. So it is revealed that uh, Eric Roberts and Helena's dad did not invent 
the DOA. Mm. The DOA is a long standing in ancient. Yeah, they yeah, discover an the ancient tradition. There you mm-hmm. go. There you go. So they have to so they have to find the true source, the true origin. The true of source the DOA. it's it's our four leading ladies now teaming up mm-hmm. to find the true source of the DOA. Yes. And of course, also alive still is a badly burned but still living Eric Roberts, obviously. Yes. yes. But now he's yes. got like a scorched up kind of face. Mm-hmm. And he wants to find he he's basically following them as they go on this mission to yes. steal the clues out from under them. So he's also so he's already stolen their martial arts. Yes. So what else can he take from them? Is my question. I think it's their beauty, man. I think it's their hot exactly. Bods. So what he's, he's, he's gonna like do... drop the skincare routine, sis. Yeah, because he, he's so all burned up. He's... He needs to get his yeah! hotness back. He needs special creams and stuff. Yeah. Yes. So he is going to attempt to steal their, their beauty skin. Yeah. He's gonna. <laughs> He's going to figure out who has the best skin. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's going to try gonna, and steal it. He's going to lotion them while they're sleeping. This is turning into the... Silence of the Lambs? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I almost get, called it the Sleepless Lambs, but the, I knew that wasn't it. And that wasn't it. No. <laughs> uh, the Sleepless Lambs. I like that. That was the uh, less popular <laughs> sequel. So uh, Eric Roberts, by the end of the movie, is going to have a full-on uh, voluptuous woman's body. And, um, and like... Crazy. He's, yeah, he wants to put his consciousness into one of them. Ooh, there you go. Yes. Oh, so then you get the, the very disconcerting thing of these gorgeous women with Eric Roberts' voice coming out of them. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yes. That's, uh, Man. What is the true, but what is the true, we, we went on an Eric Roberts tangent here. Yeah. What is the true origin? Of uh, DOA? I don't know. Maybe it's actually Asian people. <laughs> sure. Created. Yeah. Oh, man. It's yeah, Show well, Kasuki. Because... We get oh, Show yes. in this. Yeah. There you go. Well, because I feel like a corporation has kind of like taken over the yes. DOA and kind of bastardized it into their own kind of like mm-hmm. thing. But mm-hmm. it, in ancient times, it was used to resolve conflict where mm. tribes w- or clans would send their greatest fighter mm-hmm. in order so that they wouldn't have to fight wars. Instead, it would just be a tournament. Okay, this makes sense. This makes I sense. Like this. And it was right, a yeah. way of bringing peace with been, the least amount it's of been, casualties. It's been corporatized by greedy it's Americans like Eric Roberts. I like mm-hmm. this, as, yeah. As we do. Mm-hmm. There you mm-hmm. go. All right. Well, that's... Yeah. Uh, that's... Guys, I feel like we could write some really good movies. I actually... <laughs> I, I, always, I always think about this this if the movies we watch on the show count most of what we come up with is better uh it's i will say ju- I it makes to... just as much sense yeah if not it's more. sort of like well, almost, if, yeah. almost every time we watch a bad movie i'm always like oh well oh there's this like lighting thing oh i bet they're gonna turn out to be this and it's always more interesting than what it ever turns out to be that, well i mean that's mm-hmm. basically uh, if you listen those who listen to my monster show know that brendan is always chiding me for trying to fix those monster movies <laughs> but i'm always going you know if they just did this this movie would make a lot more sense. I'm always saying I can't necessarily make it better, but I could mm-hmm. make it make more sense. Uh, yeah. So that's sometimes uh, that's that's all we can. That's ask our for. idea for DOA colon dead or alive colon <laughs> source without courage uh, okay. coming to a red box near you. Well, listen, mm-hmm. we survive video game Valentine's, and it's time Whew. to go to a non-theme month, just a regular month on the show next month for that's March. Good. Man, uh, that's, that's and we're kicking things off. Wouldn't you know it, folks? Uh, we did an impression of him here. ST is with us next week. It's time All for right. an ST joint. It's a little now hold film. up, John. You're trying to tell me we're gonna watch a movie with Ice T in we're it? We're gonna watch a movie which Ice T is the star of, and it's a little film called Crazy Six. Crazy Six. Okay. Crazy okay. Six with uh the most insane cast for a movie I think we've seen. Oh, excellent. Obviously we've excellent. got Ice T. We've yes. got one of our faves on the show, Mario Van Peebles. Very nice. <gasps> Very nice. Van Peebles. We got yeah. Van Peebles back. We've got for the first time on the show, Mr. Rob Lowe. Oh, okay. And one of our absolute favorites, uh, Mr. Burt Reynolds. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Burt Reynolds. Hey, it's me. Yeah. How you doing? I'm uh, in this film. Yeah. How you doing? Nice to There's going to be so many impressions on this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. How you doing? <laughs> hey, uh, is that Ice T? Huh. No, uh, it's funny. Okay, yeah. one of you has to be Burr and one of you has to be Ice T, and you guys Yow. can't switch. Here's the problem: 
Mm-hmm. Both of John's impressions are are better than both of my impressions. <laughs> I think your iced tea is pretty good. It's, it's, I think I think I think we're on best. we're on a pretty. I mean, you both a, again. You no. both sound like old white men when you're doing your iced tea. Well, he does well, kind of sound like that himself. A, he does have an interesting voice. He does, yeah. yeah, he's not exactly a cool gangster rapper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not anymore. Uh, he does yeah. play a character named Raul in this iced tea, and yes, oh, Rob boy. Lowe okay. plays the titular crazy six. Excellent. Uh, and uh, if you don't think he has crazy long hair and a mustache in this movie, then you're not ready for Crazy Six. Oh boy. Um, uh, Listman, as always, I will ask: Do you want to hear the tagline for Crazy Six? What if I say no? <laughs> then you have to take your headphones off because I want to hear it. Okay, no, just you can just say it. <laughs> he is the six one in the in. Uh, he is the six one in his family, and he is a little bit crazy. Rob Lowe is Crazy Six. Okay. Okay. <laughs> is is wait, this insulting the youngest in families? Because I take offense to this. Because I'm the youngest of is three, Ice not tea six. Is Rob Lowe's brother? God, I hope so. God, Mario I hope Van so. Mario Van Peebles, Ice T are both siblings. And their father of, is uh, Burt Reynolds? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now this yeah, hey, uh, how you doing? Uh, hey. This comes to us from director Albert Pyun. Uh, who I believe we've seen a movie of yeah. before on this show, right? Oh, how- director of uh, everybody's favorite, Blast. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Christ. Oh, Christ. And actually, a guy whose movies, we'll see did. many more of his movies, actually, this one. Um, oh, we have a lot of Albert Pion. The late great. We just recently lost uh, uh, Albert late last year. Yeah. So, R.I.P. Uh, Al, you were real. R.I.P. Uh, I can't wait to talk about a movie of his I have seen when we get to our superhero month. Uh, the Captain America movie he made, which is right. horrible, Yeesh. horrible. Not, not the Marvel one. It nope. is not to that. To be fair, one. I didn't. I didn't like the first Captain America movie. I well, saw. that's. I, I don't agree with that, but that's all yeah. right. Um, Nobody ever does when I tell yeah. them that. Yeah, I think no. a lot. That's usually pretty high up on people's rankings. Uh, but yeah. uh, anyway, uh, so we'll talk about Crazy Six next week on the show. Yeah. Uh, but that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Action Shelf. I'm John Campbell. I'm Michael Lisman. Till next week, get yourself some action. The action show. The action show.